The Mystery of Mike DeGruy An American documentary filmmaker Mike DeGruy grew up along the Gulf of Mexico, but little did he know he would make one of the most exciting discoveries of his life in that very Gulf. When filming Blue Planet beneath the Gulf of Mexico, he found an underwater lake. He said the following, Wait a minute, I'm already underwater. How can there be a lake? A pool of thick, ultra-salty brine had accumulated in one area, giving the appearance of a lake beneath the waters. This dense lake is so salty, five times more than the surrounding area, that only microscopic life is capable of living within. The shore of this underwater lake is lined with mollusks and crustaceans. Degree explains that on the other side of the mussels there was nothing, just mud. Perhaps the most interesting quality of the undersea brine lake is that submarines practically bounce off it instead of moving through it, due to how dense it is. Mike DeGruy explained that he and his crew tried to descend into the lake, but upon making contact, reported that the liquid was so incredibly dense that the submersible bounced off the surface. He was intrigued by this discovery and wanted to explore further, revealing that a whole new world could be beneath this dense lake. Mike DeGruy is quoted as saying the following, Without a doubt, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen at the bottom of the ocean was while I was filming for Blue Planet. It was in the Gulf of Mexico. I noticed something out in the distance, but I couldn't tell what it was. It looked like a dark band. As we approached the dark band, it became a donut. I saw this donut, and it was black in the center. As we got closer and closer to it, I noticed that the black band had what looked like steam over it, but there was water flapping against the shore. This band was a ring of mussels. Inside the ring of mussels was a lake. We went out over the water and tried to descend it and bounced off it. The submarine couldn't go inside it. We literally bounced off it. I have never seen anything like it. End quote. Mike never descended into the lake, and shortly after the discovery, he lost his life in a helicopter crash. The Unsolved Disappearance of Alvin Matlock Throughout history, unsolved disappearances have captivated the human imagination. These mysterious cases, where individuals vanish without a trace and their fate remains unknown, strike a chord deep within our psyche. Human beings have an inherent curiosity, a desire to seek answers and uncover the truth. Unsolved disappearances represent a perplexing puzzle, a narrative with loose ends and unanswered questions, and the unknown surrounding these cases fuels our curiosity, prompting us to seek resolution and closure. We are drawn to mysteries that challenge our understanding of the world and leave us pondering the possibilities. In 1951, Alvin Matlock, a seasoned veteran of the US Army, found himself navigating the challenges of starting afresh in the Pacific Northwest region. Seeking a sense of independence, he decided to settle in a quaint cabin situated just outside the bustling city of Spokane, Washington. A young man affectionately referred to as Bud by his close friends Alvin embarked on this journey with determination and optimism. In order to keep his loved ones informed about his whereabouts, he took the initiative to reach out to his family members in March and shared his new location with them. Initially living a solitary life and being an avid lover of nature and outdoor activities, he carried out his daily routine in seclusion. However, after a span of seven months, during which his absence was felt strongly, concerns started to mount among his family members when he failed to join them for the customary Thanksgiving dinner. Alarmed by this unexpected deviation from his usual behavior, his mother decided to pay a visit to his cabin, only to discover its unoccupied state. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, she immediately reported him as missing to the authorities. The whereabouts of Matlock remained unknown and puzzled everyone for an extended period of seven months. Speculations and reports emerged during this time, offering various explanations for his sudden disappearance. Some seemingly harmless accounts hinted that he had discreetly relocated to Alaska, seeking a fresh start away from the prying eyes. However, amidst these benign narratives, darker and more sinister rumors circulated, suggesting a tragic fate for Matlock. The police had initially suspected foul play in the case of Matlock's disappearance, but unfortunately, 
No promising leads or evidence ever materialized to shed light on the matter. Matlock seemingly vanished without a trace, leaving his case an unsolved mystery. What happened to Natalie Wood? Approximately four decades ago, the acclaimed Hollywood actress, Natalie Wood, tragically lost her life due to drowning near Catalina Island. According to the authorities, the untimely demise of the 43-year-old renowned actress from West Side Story was officially classified as an accident. They carefully examined the circumstances surrounding her tragic passing and came to the conclusion that due to her inability to swim and the fact that she had consumed alcoholic beverages the night before, she was discovered lifeless, floating face down. In the investigator's attached report that accompanies Noguchi's document, it is stated that actress Natalie Wood, along with her husband Robert Wagner and a small group, departed the yacht Splendor and went to a restaurant for dinner on Catalina Island. The group, described as intoxicated, returned to the yacht around 10 in the evening, using the dinghy named Valiant. According to Wagner's statement to the investigators, at around 10.45, Natalie retired to their cabin for the night, while he continued conversing with their guest, Christopher Walken, who was also her co-star at the time. However, when Wagner went to join Natalie in the cabin, he discovered that she was no longer there. In this comprehensive and in-depth retelling, we learn that Natalie and Robert, accompanied by a few others, ventured out from the splendor to enjoy a meal at a restaurant on Catalina Island. Wagner, along with the other individuals accompanying him, swiftly realized that the dinghy was also absent from its original location. Consequently, an urgent call for assistance was immediately transmitted via radio. The harbor patrol swiftly mobilized, joined by diligent private search teams, and in due course, the Coast Guard was also deployed to meticulously search the surrounding waters and the coastline of the island. It was the diligent efforts of a Sheriff's Department helicopter that ultimately spotted Natalie drifting on the water's surface. Tragically, Natalie was officially declared deceased at 7.44 in the morning. The funeral of Wood took place on December 3rd and was a deeply emotional event that left Wagner in a state of devastation, with tears streaming down his face. He was accompanied by a gathering of close friends, family members, and some of the most prominent figures in the entertainment industry, including Laurence Olivier, Frank Sinatra, and Gregory Peck. Instead of reaching a definitive conclusion, the passing of Wood raised more questions, prompting the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department to reopen the investigation three decades later, in 2011. In February 2018, Captain Christopher Bergner, representing the Homicide Department, announced during a press conference that they had identified new witnesses and individuals with pertinent information. Consequently, a different timeline of Natalie Wood's final hours on the boat and the timing of the distress call had emerged, shedding a new light on the case. This comprehensive exploration delves deep into the investigation, revealing a wealth of previously unknown details that have the potential to enrich our understanding of the events surrounding Natalie Wood's tragic demise. During the press conference held in February, Lieutenant John Carina from the Homicide Bureau of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department made a significant statement, indicating that Robert Wagner, aged 88, was deemed as a person of interest. Moreover, he expressed the department's desire to engage in further discussions and to obtain Wagner's account of the events in question. Lieutenant Carina also mentioned the existence of new witnesses who may provide valuable insights. These witnesses were individuals aboard adjacent boats which were docked near the Wagner yacht. According to their testimonies, a heated argument between a couple was overheard, followed by a woman's desperate plea for assistance. The inclusion of these new witnesses adds an additional layer of evidence to the ongoing investigation, shedding light on the circumstances surrounding the incident. Carina further mentioned that in addition to speaking with witnesses who encountered the group on Catalina Island during that particular weekend, his department also interviewed individuals who were familiar with Wagner and Wood. In the course of their investigation, disturbing details have come to light regarding the final hours aboard the yacht, with rumors circulating about excessive alcohol consumption, intense anger, and allegations of infidelity. These revelations provide a more comprehensive understanding of the events, delving into the depths of the circumstances surrounding the tragedy. Davin, who was not only a Navy veteran, but also a close family friend, 
assumed the role of captain during that fateful weekend. In various interviews, and even in his co-written book titled Goodbye Natalie, Goodbye Splendor, alongside Marty Rooley, Davin revealed that Wagner instructed both him and Walken to adhere to the original narrative once Natalie was discovered. This narrative coincided with the timeline outlined in the 1981 coroner's report, which stated that Natalie retired to bed earlier than the others. It was when Wagner, after engaging in a conversation with Walken, proceeded to join Natalie that he discovered her absence, along with the absence of the dinghy. Delving deeper into the details, it is evident that Davin's accounts offer significant insights into the events surrounding Natalie Wood's tragic demise, shedding a comprehensive light on the circumstances that unfolded that weekend. According to Davin, during a televised interview with Nancy Grace several years later, he revealed that the argument between Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken had actually begun the day before the tragic incident took place. According to Davin, an individual who was present at the time, Natalie Wood and Christopher Walken spent a considerable amount of time in a bar located on Catalina Island. During their time there, they were seen laughing and engaging in what appeared to be flirtatious behaviour. However, their joyful atmosphere quickly shifted when Wood's husband joined them, seemingly filled with anger and frustration. Despite this tense situation, the group continued their evening by proceeding to have dinner at a restaurant called Doug's Harbour Reef. To add to the ambience, they indulged in various alcoholic beverages, including champagne, two bottles of wine, and cocktails. Sheriff's investigators have extensively relied upon the essential testimony provided by Marilyn Wayne, a key witness who coincidentally found herself on a boat anchored just 80 feet away during the incident in question. Wayne's account reveals that at approximately 11 in the evening, she distinctly heard a distress call resonating through the night air. Remarkably, these haunting cries persisted for nearly half an hour, gradually fading away as the clock approached 11.30 in the evening. Faced with such a grave situation, Wayne's boyfriend, in an admirable effort, endeavoured to alert the harbourmaster for immediate assistance, only to be met with silence on the other end of the line, adding to the sense of urgency and desperation. One of the most concerning aspects of this situation is the significant delay before anyone became aware that Wood was missing. Contrary to the assertion of immediate notification to the authorities, as described in Finstad's book and emphasised by Davin in various interviews, Wagner did not place the first call to shore until 1.30 in the morning. This detail raises questions about the sequence of events and the actions taken during that crucial period of time. According to the Sheriff's Department, as of February, the investigative team continues their efforts to locate additional witnesses who may still retain memories of the night in question. The aim is to gather more information regarding the timeline and gain further insights into the exact moment Wood entered the water. At a press conference, Karina expressed the team's determination to exhaust all possibilities, stating, this is our final attempt to encourage anyone with relevant information to come forward. The department is committed to pursuing every lead in an in-depth and comprehensive manner, seeking to enrich the investigation by uncovering additional clues and shedding more light on the circumstances surrounding Wood's disappearance. Aurora, Texas UFO Incident It was almost dawn on April 17, 1897, when inhabitants of a rural American town saw a single alien spacecraft lose control over the skies of Texas. A young boy saw an airship trailing smoke as it headed north toward the town of Aurora, slowing and speeding as it tried to regain control over its trajectory. It sailed over the public square, reaching the northern part of the town where it clipped the edge of a windmill at speed, then veering into the path of the town's water tower where, upon contact, blew into a number of pieces, large and small, in a terrific explosion, scattering debris over several acres of ground and awakening many of the town's residents. The residents that awoke went to investigate the source of their early wake-up call. What they found would astound and stupefy the townspeople. Having read about numerous mystery airships in national newspapers recently, including an abduction attempt, they wondered if this was something not only extraterrestrial, but also nefarious in nature. On locating the ship's sole occupant, although the pilot was dead and disfigured from the crash, they soon realised that he was clearly not an inhabitant of this world. Furthermore, strange markings in the manner of hieroglyphic characters 
were seen on the internal control panel. Terrified of the unknown, the townspeople hurriedly buried the body in the local cemetery and removing the wreckage in the hope that the incident would disappear from the town's history. But that would not be the end of this. Some decades later, an investigative reporter wanted to find out once and for all all the facts behind this extraterrestrial cover-up. The investigator began with trying to locate the remains of the spacecraft itself. One Aurora resident interviewed claimed the whole thing was a fabrication, maintaining there had never been a windmill for the craft to collide with in that town. It turns out there was no windmill to be seen, however, further investigations revealed the remains of a windmill base were found. Was this Aurora resident still continuing the cover-up all these years after? More was added to the mystery as the nearby site of the old windmill was a deep well. A sweep of the well would reveal metals in the water itself, some elements such as aluminium and silver, but others that were unidentifiable in this planet's periodic table. Could this water well be where the spacecraft's parts had been dumped back in 1897? The presence of metals surprised the well's owner, however he disclosed that having started using the well, he began to feel pains in his joints and soon diagnosed with early onset arthritis that could be associated with contaminated water. With the location of the spacecraft possibly found, the investigator moved to locate the extraterrestrial pilot. He went to the Aurora Cemetery and ground-penetrating radar and photos from prior visits brought to light an unmarked grave in an area near other burials from the 1890s. He discovered a grave marker and headstone that seemed to show a spacecraft of some sort, as well as faint readings from his metal detector again. This was surely the conclusive evidence he was looking for. After putting the pieces together, the investigator returned to the town, looking to ask for permission from the cemetery association to perform an exhumation, and to conduct a more major operation of retrieving the spacecraft's pieces from the well. Not only did the cemetery association refuse his request, but upon returning to the site to take photos, not only had the grave marker mysteriously disappeared, but the metal readings now showed nothing. Returning to the well, the investigator had a feeling he knew what he'd find. The metal detector now also didn't pick up anything either. The UFO landing in Aurora, Texas would remain an unexplained mystery. Berwyn Mountain Incident On January 23, 1974, the locals in the Berwyn Mountains area of Wales heard an alarming noise and saw a beam of light in the sky. When neurologists speculated that an unidentified flying object crashed and the British government hid the military's recovery, tabloids in the area mockingly referred to it as the Roswellsh Incident. There were over five reports of a UFO sighting that night, and a search and rescue team was assembled to locate the crash, but it was never found. There was scientific confirmation that the event was generated by an earthquake along with a large meteor widely observed over Wales and northern England, casting a bright light in their direction. The Institute of Geological Sciences claimed that an earthquake of 3.5 magnitude was experienced at 8.38 pm over a wide area of northern Wales and as far away as Formby, a town about 13 miles north of Liverpool. There was a police investigation into the incident showing that it was not immediately identified as an earthquake. If the magnitude of the shock was such that it had been due to an aircraft crash, the resulting crater would have been large enough to easily be visible. There are many theories about the unusual lights reported, but the most popular is that it may have been simply the meteor, but may have also included the phenomenon known as earthquake light. Earthquake light is a luminous aerial phenomenon that appears in the sky at or near areas of tectonic stress. The incident was dismissed as just that, an earthquake and a meteor combining. The meteor descended from 120 kilometers in the sky before disappearing over Manchester. Al Bielek and the Philadelphia Experiment He claims to have been at the very center of the Philadelphia Experiment, which may be one of the biggest conspiracy theories of the 20th century. If you are unfamiliar with the Philadelphia Experiment, it's an event that took place in 1943 when the United States Navy supposedly teleported the USS Eldridge from Philadelphia to Norfolk, Virginia. 
the ship was made invisible and just appeared at its final location. During the trip from one state to the next, some men were said to have gone missing, whilst others ended up becoming fused to the ship itself. With such an outlandish story, it's difficult to believe such a thing really happened. Al Bielik claims to have been a part of this experiment and has shared many details regarding the events that may or may not have transpired. He provided historical details that could be verified, as well as specifics on the people and places that were involved. Bielik has made further claims that Nikola Tesla was part of the experiment and that two men were sent 40 years into the future and then returned back to the ship. Whilst that alone is crazy to think about, he also believes that these types of experiments date back to 1931 when Tesla had found a way to make objects invisible. Bielik also explains that he and his brother were commissioned in 1983 to travel in between this wormhole to destroy all of the equipment that was on the USS Eldridge. They apparently had to go back to the past to avoid their arrival in 1983 that was causing many problems. When attempting to go back in time, they claim to have accidentally ended up in 2137, spending many weeks in a hospital bed recovering from burns they endured during their teleportation. Bielik then was said to have travelled to 2749, spending two years living in that time period. Aside from this travel to the future, Bielik stated that there were many floating cities that could be transported to other parts of the planet. In this world, the population was apparently only 300 million people and he explained that it was because only few could adapt to this new environment. There were no military or soldiers or any conflict between countries. There were also no government systems in place and computers had eliminated all physical labour. Money was also not needed in this future world where people had credits they could use to buy anything they needed, whenever they needed it. Although Bielik's stories about the future certainly sound interesting, he has been unable to truly prove that he was involved in the Philadelphia experiment and that any of what he said is real. Do you think he experienced all these things or was he making it up? Could he have perhaps experienced these things in his mind, but not in the physical world? Until others come forward to back his beliefs, it will be challenging for him to find those that believe his word as truth. The Mysterious Cat Shabib In 1948, British diplomat Sir Alec Kirkbride made an awe-inspiring discovery in southern Jordan, ancient walls that spread 150 kilometers this making them Jordan's longest archaeological site. The Kat Shabib walls have since been analysed and studied by a range of researchers, scientists and archaeologists. To this day, the construction of the Kat Shabib remains a total mystery to us. Some scholars claim they were built during the Iron Age, while others argue it was during the Nabataean era. Academics believe that the wall was used and composed by the Bedouin people. Their culture was semi-nomadic and relied heavily on farming and herding in Jordan's desert landscape. As such, the wall was likely not used for military tactics or strategy, but rather meant to be a border. In recent times, the Kat Shabib has gained renown in archaeological circles, with various scholars wanting to learn more about it and its origins. The Kat Shabib mostly goes through the desert of Jordan, but according to records, it begins close to the Wadi al Hasa another historic landmark, and passes by various ancient urban villages and towns such as Shobak and Maan. The Kat Shabib is not the only archaeological site of merit in the area, as the nearby landscape includes the Wadi Rum and Petra. As such, the Kat Shabib makes an excellent tourist destination. The wall itself was named after Amir Shabib al-Madawi, an Arabian prince of the al-Madawi Emirate who ruled over Transjordan. In the Arabic language, cat refers to the word line, so the most direct translation would interpret the cat Shabib to simply Shabib's wall. Various attempts have been made to try and date the wall. One particular study involved analysing the rocks of the wall to date it back chronologically. The study relied on some bleached wall samples, and results revealed that the walls seemed to have been built anywhere between 400 and 100 BCE. This establishes the wall to have been created during the Iron Age, which lasted from 539 BCE to 332 BCE. 
Despite these findings, some scholars continue to argue they were built even earlier. Alongside the sun-bleached analysis of the rock, archaeologists have been able to find artifacts to help more accurately date when the walls were used. Pottery shards have been found close to the Kachabib, but there were not as many artifacts as researchers hoped and nowhere near enough to base a time period on artifact remnants alone. It's thought that they match the proposed Iron Age date. It's believed the wall took several eras to be constructed, but no one is quite sure how long it took. The Unsolved Mystery of Armand B. Johnson at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park Sometimes not all mysteries of lives taken within national parks are the case of an off-trail incident, an innocent mistake, or a fun day out gone suddenly wrong. While those cases are truly horrific, there are some that have a far more sinister side. A case like this one is the unsolved mystery of the deceased Armin B. Johnson. The 44-year-old man was found in the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park in 2005. He was found dead, with his autopsy revealing the cause of his passing to be from a singular firearm wound, which struck him in the upper back and lower neck area. It was an unlucky passerby who stumbled across Armand Johnson's body close to the 71-mile marker along the route back in April of 2005. Johnson had worked at several local resorts as a massage therapist, had a degree in sports medicine, and hosted a reggae music show on a local radio station. Between these different vocations, he had a strong influence upon the community, and years on, his death continues to shock many. The FBI had a limited amount of information regarding the case. Between the lack of evidence and the secluded area, there was a lack of leads available. Ten years on, in 2015, they appealed to the public, offering a reward of $10,000 if anyone was able to come forth with any relevant information to the case. FBI Special Agent in Charge Paul D. Delacourt mentioned that it was hoped that the passage of time would allow any witnesses to feel as though they could come forward and share what they know. To this day, we don't know why, how or who it was that committed this violent, horrific crime. Hexham Head in 1971, two brothers, Leslie, aged 8, and Colin, aged 11, lived at 3 Reed Avenue in Hexham, England, and were digging outdoors in their family's back garden. For a child, digging can be a great source of entertainment, and it's instantly up-leveled when an interesting discovery is made. In the holes the boys were creating, they spotted two round objects, each about the size of a small apple. They appeared to be some sort of carved head. It is undetermined what the heads were actually made of, but during that time it was believed that they were carved from some sort of stone. The Robson brothers were eager to show their parents what they had found. The precious new possessions were left on the main floor of the Robson house, and the family headed upstairs to bed for the night. Little did they know something very out of the ordinary was about to happen. The family members found that the heads had moved when they checked on them in the morning. This was an odd thing, but not too alarming. Later on, however, it seems that one of the boys had their hair pulled by an invisible being. There was broken glass found in the beds of the Robson sisters. There was a glowing outside coming from the areas where the heads were extracted from the ground. An especially terrifying occurrence happened in the middle of the night. The mother of the family saw a half-man, half-goat beast inside of the house. She watched frozen with fear. The neighbours of the Robsons also reported seeing a mysterious animal in their home. Half man, half sheep. Is it possible it could have been the same creature? Dr. Anne Ross, an expert in Celtic artefacts, was given the opportunity to study the heads. While the heads were under her care, in her home, Dr. Ross reported that she woke up one morning and saw a part wolf, part man individual leaving the room. She was able to track it down the stairs and watch it head toward the kitchen when it disappeared out of sight. Her daughter also gives an account of seeing something that looked like a dark werewolf on the stairs. It leapt over the banister and into the hallway before it dematerialized. Once the heads left the homes they were in, the scary incident stopped. The last known location of the Hexham heads 
was at Southampton University in 1978. They have since been lost and their whereabouts are unknown. The Disappearance of Thelma Pauline Polly Melton In 1981, Thelma, also known as Polly, was living in an Airstream camp with her husband. They lived half of the year in Jacksonville, Florida and would travel to the Great Smoky Mountains for a couple of months in the fall. Polly was an avid hiker. Even though she had some minor health issues, she was still able to explore the outdoors and hike through the national park. Her husband, about 20 years older than her, did not go with her on these hikes, so she would often recruit friends to journey with her. On September 25, 1981, Polly and her husband set up their camp trailer at the Deep Creek Campground. The 58-year-old outdoor enthusiast went hiking with friends in the Deep Creek area. Around 4 p.m., Polly walked ahead of her friends, who told investigators they rested as she continued over a hill on the trail and out of sight. They assumed she had returned to check on her husband at campground, but when they got back half an hour later, Polly's husband Bob said he had not seen her. Around 6 p.m. that night, the group reported her missing to a local park ranger. It was said that Poppy was familiar with the trail they were on, and there was no indication that anyone had ventured off. She was prescribed medication for high blood pressure and nausea at the time. Polly disappeared hiking with her friends in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park more than 40 years ago. Authorities say that around 400 people go mysteriously missing in Tennessee each year. That is five for every 100,000 people. Disappearance of Susan Walsh Another strange cold case is the disappearance of Susan Walsh, a reporter and dancer in Nutley, New Jersey. She was last seen on July 16, 1996, when she appeared at her estranged husband, Mark's house, and hurriedly dropped off their son, David. Although she did not tell Mark where she was going or why she was in such a hurry, she told him that she would return in a few minutes. However, this was the last Mark ever saw of Susan, and while some authorities believe that she chose to vanish into the seedy subculture of New Jersey, others have found plenty of reasons why harm may have befallen her. Susan was a freelance reporter who used her history of stripping, narcotics, and alcohol abuse to investigate the prostitution industry including a recent report on Russian mobsters in New Jersey who had been forcing young Russian women to work like slaves in New Jersey strip clubs. The article made waves in the community, but she also received multiple threats for the information that she revealed. Her friend reported discovering that she had started cutting her wrists and taking tranquilizers in addition to falling back into previous alcoholic ways. She told another friend that she had bronchitis, emphysema, mood swings, depression, and an ulcer, and frequently had to go to the hospital. In light of this, many thought that she may have simply collapsed as a result of her symptoms, but because her body was never found, police were forced to discount that theory, and instead believe that she chose to disappear. After her disappearance, there were several reported sightings of her, although none were ever verified, and some people hypothesized that she was intentionally hiding as a result of the threats that the Russian mob had leveled against her. An acquaintance of Susan, Melissa Hines, thought she spotted her next to a black car, but when she yelled to Susan, both she and the men who were with her entered the car and sped away. The car was later tracked through its license plate and the driver admitted that he might have been with Susan that day but could not be sure. Although the police believe she intentionally left, she left behind all of her belongings, money, and medication, and her friends and family claim that she would never have left without her son. Estranged husband Mark, although not an official suspect in the case, is considered by some to have something to do with her disappearance. He refused forensic testing on their apartment and claimed that she used a payphone near their building right before disappearing, but there were no outgoing calls from that payphone. However, police have not named Mark as a suspect. No further trace of Susan has been found and no more clues as to her disappearance have come to light, leaving her case cold and unsolved to this day. Archaeologists uncover secret passage to the underworld at Pyramid of the Moon in Teotihuacan. 
The antique city of Teotihuacan is the subject of much curiosity, especially now that an underground tunnel was uncovered by archaeologists underneath the mystical pyramid of the moon. It is believed that the tunnel symbolizes the Aztec passage to the underworld. In 300 BCE, the people of Mesoamerica built the great city as they expanded their settlements. At its prime, more than 125,000 people lived in Teotihuacan. At the time, it was the sixth largest city in the entire ancient world. Robert Cowgill, an archaeologist at the University of Arizona, has stated that it was the largest city anywhere in the Western Hemisphere before the 1400s. It had thousands of residential compounds and scores of pyramid temples comparable to the largest pyramids of Egypt. It is unknown who built the city in its entirety. Teotihuacan is older than the Aztec people by an estimated entire millennium. There is evidence that a variety of cultures resided in the city through the centuries, including the Mayans, who influenced much of the architecture. Which culture or civilization created Teotihuacan cannot be confirmed, at least not with the limited evidence we have. The name itself comes from the Aztec word that means birthplace of the gods. However, Mayan hieroglyphs recognize the city as Pu, place of reeds. The city was in ruins when the Aztecs claimed it as their own, abandoned and forlorn for at least half a century, if not longer. Scholars are conflicted about what could have happened to the city. Some believe that Teotihuacan was abruptly attacked, its downfall resulting in a brutal siege by enemy forces. Other scholars argue that there is evidence that suggests a civil uprising occurred due to some unforeseen ecological catastrophe, such as famine, with the ruling class being overthrown. Another theory is that some natural disaster caused a vast population to decline and made survivors move away. There is residual proof of various buildings in Teotihuacan having been burnt. The theory of enemy civilizations ransacking the city is widely accepted by scholars nowadays, though. However, the only structures with evidence of having been burnt are the ones believed to have housed the ruling class, coming full circle and suggesting a social revolt. The Pyramid of the Moon was traced back to between 100 and 450 AD and was used for animal and human sacrifice, though it additionally served as a burial ground for the victims of sacrifice. An altar resided in the pyramid dedicated to the great goddess of Teotihuacan. Dr. Veronica Ortega, an archaeologist, explained in the explorations carried out at the end of the 1980s, through tunnels excavated in the body of the pyramid, archaeologists Ruben Cabrera and Saburu Sugiyama found skeletons of individuals with cranial deformation. The news of this great tunnel, symbolic of the descent into the underworld meant for the victims of human sacrifice, makes us yearn for more knowledge, knowledge that may never come to us but is fascinating to consider. It is unknown whether the tunnel was added by the Aztecs or if it had already been there before them. Perhaps someday we will finally find out. We found some strange radio sources in a distant galaxy cluster. A galaxy cluster is the most massive object in the universe that keeps itself whole through its own gravitational force. They mostly contain dark matter, but also host large amounts of hot plasma. And they also contain hundreds to thousands of individual galaxies clustered together, as the name suggests. Recently, astronomers found rare radio objects inside a galaxy cluster deep inside our universe. The radio objects include a radio halo, a radio relic, and a fossil radio emission. While most galaxy clusters have some kind of radio object, the ones found in this galaxy cluster, named Abel 3266, were different. Scientists have found that these radio objects do not adhere to the known theories about the origins and characteristics of radio objects, causing scientists to question those theories. Scientists believe radio halos, relics and fossils are created when one galaxy cluster collides with another. When they collide, energy is transferred into the hot plasma that makes up galaxy clusters, which can cause a radio emission. These emissions can be generated in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. For example, radio relics are arc-shaped, 
and can be found on the outer edges of a cluster. At the same time, halos reside more toward the cluster's center. Fossils are a bit different. Fossil radio emissions are created when a supermassive black hole dies near the center of a radio galaxy. Abel 3266 is about 800 million light-years away and is a particularly dynamic colliding system. Scientists were initially perplexed because no relics or halos were found on Abel 3266, a cluster that should have had these radio objects in it. To get a better look, scientists used the ASCAP radio telescope and the Australia Telescope Compact Array to view Abel 3266 in more detail. The data helped astronomers see the differences in the energy emissions coming off the galaxy cluster. They used the data to look more closely at the newly discovered radio objects and found that they do not have the same characteristics as other radio objects. This new discovery changes how scientists understand radio objects, galaxy clusters, and how they interact with the universe. The Mysterious Handbags The ancient Sumerian civilization was one of the earliest civilizations in human history, and it was known for its remarkable achievements in the fields of agriculture, architecture, and art. One of the most intriguing aspects of Sumerian art is the depiction of their gods and goddesses carrying handbags or purses. These handbags are often depicted as being carried by both male and female deities, and they are depicted in a variety of shapes and sizes. They are typically shown as being held in the hand of the god or goddess, and they are often decorated with intricate patterns and designs. The exact significance of these handbags is not fully understood, as there is very little written information about them. However, Scholars have proposed several theories as to their meaning and function. One theory is that these handbags symbolize the power and wealth of the gods and goddesses. In ancient Sumerian society, handbags were often used as a symbol of status and wealth, and it is possible that the gods and goddesses were depicted carrying them to emphasize their importance and power. Another theory is that these handbags represent the sacred knowledge or secrets of the gods and goddesses. In ancient Sumerian religion, knowledge was considered to be a sacred and valuable commodity, and it is possible that these handbags symbolized the gods and goddesses' possession of this knowledge. A third theory is that these handbags represent the gods and goddesses' ability to provide for their worshippers. In ancient Sumerian society, handbags were often used to carry food, water, and other essential items, and it is possible that the gods and goddesses were depicted carrying them to symbolize their ability to provide for their worshippers. It has been seen in images created by the Sumerians, in ancient temples in Turkey, in work crafted by the Maori in New Zealand, and in Central America, made by the Olmecs. So, with this so-called handbag spanning such a great geographical coverage, it should be no surprise that it has made frequent occurrences throughout time too, with our earliest known record of it dating back to the end of the Ice Age. So, with plenty of time to have attempted to decipher it, what do researchers think the ancient world was telling us with this handbag symbol? The symbol has earned itself the handbag nickname since it does resemble how we might draw a bag in the modern day. In most of the instances in which we see it, the symbol has a rounded semicircle top, giving it a handle-like appearance, and then we see a rectangular bottom. Researchers have noted that sometimes extra details appear that seem to indicate some textures or patterns. Adding to the handbag connotations, the symbol has been shown in the hand of various people, gods, and mythical entities. It often does occur as a single image. One theory that has been posed describes the handbag to be representative of the cosmos. We already know that in many ancient societies, across a somewhat broad geographical scope, a circle has been used to portray the spiritual world, or much more broadly, non-material concepts and beliefs. Therefore, the semicircle or the rounded handle of the handbag could be the world of spirituality and the rectangular base of the bag, the earth. The joined nature in these theories acts as a symbol of the material and non-material worlds, the earth and the sky, becoming unified either once again or for the first time, dependent upon each ancient culture's beliefs. Regardless of their exact meaning, these handbags are a fascinating and unique aspect of ancient Sumerian art. They provide a glimpse into the beliefs and values of this ancient civilization, and they raise important questions about the role of symbolism and iconography in ancient art. 
It is worth noting that these handbags are not unique to Sumerian art, and similar depictions can be found in the art of other ancient civilizations. For example, in ancient Egyptian art, the goddess Isis is often depicted carrying a handbag or satchel, which is said to contain the severed head of her husband Osiris. Similarly, in ancient Greek art, the goddess Athena is often depicted carrying a handbag or purse, which is said to contain her most valuable possessions. These similarities suggest that the symbolism of handbags and purses may have been a widespread and universal motif in ancient art. As of right now, the handbags seen being carried by ancient Sumerian gods and goddesses are a fascinating and unique aspect of this ancient civilization's art. Although their exact meaning is not fully understood, scholars have proposed several theories as to their significance, including as a symbol of power and wealth, a representation of sacred knowledge, and a symbol of the gods and goddesses' ability to provide for their worshippers. These handbags are a testament to the enduring power of symbolism and iconography in art, and they provide a glimpse into the beliefs and values of one of the earliest civilizations in human history. The Origins of Human Beings Religion versus science is a never-ending debate when it comes to the topic of the creation of life on Earth. Ancient civilizations did not have the same concept of religion as we do in the modern day, but they did have gods and divine theories of creation. The Sumerians were spiritual people, and whilst much of their civilization was based upon never-before-seen advances in human society, they did believe strongly in the all-being and all-seeing. In fact, the Sumerians split themselves into cities each guarded by a god, of which they had many. The Sumerians' myth of the creation of the world, referred to at time as the Enuma Elish, refers to human gods ruling the earth as it began. They did the labor that was required to make the world suitable for human civilization, such as mining minerals cultivating the soil. The tablet upon which the myth is inscribed was discovered in 1849 by English archaeologist Austin Henry Lanyard. It lay in the ruins of the Library of Ashurbanipal, which was located in northern Iraq, thought to be part of the area of the Middle East that Sumerian civilization grew from. But the tablet explains that the gods quickly grew tired of their labor, and Anu, the god of the gods, decided that they needed a hand. They then created man to labor for them by sacrificing a god and mixing his blood with clay. This is an idea that the Sumerians believed in devoutly, as they truly viewed themselves as lesser than the gods. The Sumerian myth then draws parallels with Christianity, saying that the first man was created in Eden. This was the garden referred to in the Epic of Gilgamesh that was home to the gods. However, some of the gods realized that humans could not reproduce and thus gave them the ability to do so. But this did not go down well between the gods and a conflict ensued between them. Scholars point to similarities between this story and that of Adam and Eve, but it's not been verified as to whether this served as a basis for the Christian story. As such, the intrigue surrounding the creation of life goes on. The Epic of Gilgamesh The Epic of Gilgamesh is an ancient epic poem from Mesopotamia that tells the story of Gilgamesh, a historical king of the city-state of Uruk, and his adventures and quests for immortality. It is one of the earliest known works of literature, dating back to the 3rd millennium BCE. The epic is divided into 12 tablets, each of which tells a different part of the story of Gilgamesh. The first tablet introduces the character of Gilgamesh, describing him as a powerful and arrogant king who is feared and respected by his people. The second tablet tells the story of Enkidu, a wild man who is created by the gods to serve as a rival to Gilgamesh. The third and fourth tablets describe the friendship that develops between Gilgamesh and Enkidu as they embark on a series of adventures together. They slay the monster Humbaba, guardian of the cedar forest, and take out the Bull of Heaven, which has been sent to punish Gilgamesh for spurning the advances of the goddess Ishtar. In the fifth and sixth tablets, Gilgamesh mourns the passing of Enkidu, who is taken out by the gods as punishment for taking out the Bull of Heaven. In his grief, Gilgamesh becomes obsessed with the idea of immortality and sets out on a quest to find the secret of eternal life. In the seventh and eighth tablets, Gilgamesh travels to the end of the world, where he meets Utnapishtim, a man who has been granted eternal life by the gods. Utnapishtim tells Gilgamesh the story of the Great Flood, which was sent by the gods to destroy all life on earth. 
He also gives Gilgamesh a test of his worthiness for eternal life, which he fails. In the ninth and tenth tablets, Gilgamesh returns to Uruk, where he reflects on his experiences and comes to accept his mortality. In the eleventh tablet, he is shown a vision of the underworld, where he sees the souls of those who've passed and learns the fate that awaits him after his passing. In the twelfth and final tablet, Gilgamesh returns to Uruk, where he is hailed as a hero and a great king. He is remembered as a powerful ruler who brought prosperity to his people, but also as a flawed and mortal human being who learned the value of humility and acceptance. The Epic of Gilgamesh is an important work of literature for several reasons. First, it is one of the earliest known works of literature and provides a glimpse into the culture and beliefs of ancient Mesopotamia. It also explores important themes and ideas that are still relevant today, such as the quest for immortality, the nature of friendship, and the acceptance of mortality. The epic also has a significant influence on later works of literature. It has been suggested that the story of Gilgamesh may have influenced the stories of other ancient epics. It has also been cited as an influence on later works of literature, such as the biblical story of Noah's Ark. As of right now, the Epic of Gilgamesh is an important work of literature that provides a glimpse into the culture and beliefs of ancient Mesopotamia. It explores important themes and ideas that are still relevant today and has had a significant influence on later works of literature. It is a testament to the enduring power of storytelling and a reminder of the rich literary heritage of the ancient world. The Sumerian Great Flood The ancient Sumerian Great Flood is a mythological event that is believed to have inspired the story of Noah's Ark in the Bible. According to Sumerian mythology, the Great Flood was a catastrophic event that destroyed most of the known world and was caused by the anger of the gods. The Sumerian story of the Great Flood begins with the gods growing angry with humanity due to their disobedience and arrogance. The god Enlil decided to send a massive flood to destroy all life on earth, with the exception of one man named Zeusudra also known as Utnapishtim, or Atrahasis. Zeusudra was warned of the impending flood by the god Enki, who instructed him to build a large boat in order to survive the flood. The boat was to be made of bitumen and covered with pitch to make it watertight. Zeusudra was instructed to take his family, along with all the animals and seeds needed to rebuild civilization, onto the boat. The flood lasted for seven days and seven nights, and when it finally receded, Zeusudra sent out a series of birds to see if the waters had subsided. The first two birds, a dove and a swallow, returned to the boat, but the third bird, a raven, did not return, indicating that the waters had receded and that land was once again visible. Zeusudra then gave offerings to the gods, who were pleased with his obedience and allowed him and his family to repopulate the earth. The story of the Great Flood has been interpreted in many ways over the centuries and it continues to be a subject of fascination and speculation among scholars and laypeople alike. Some scholars believe that the story of the Great Flood was inspired by an actual flood that occurred in the region, while others see it as a purely mythological tale. Regardless of its origins, the story of the Great Flood has had a lasting impact on human culture and history. It has been retold and adapted in various forms throughout history, and it has influenced the development of religious and mythological traditions around the world. The story of the Great Flood has also been linked to the concept of renewal and rebirth, as the flood is seen as a cleansing force that washes away the old and makes way for the new. This theme of renewal and rebirth is present in many cultures and is often associated with the cycle of seasons, the changing of the tides, and the rhythms of nature. As of right now, the ancient Sumerian Great Flood is an event that has had a lasting impact on human culture and history. The story of the flood has been interpreted in many ways over the centuries, and it continues to be a subject of fascination and speculation among scholars and laypeople alike. Regardless of its origins, the story of the great flood has helped to shape the human understanding of the cycle of life and rebirth, and it continues to resonate with people around the world to this day. The ancient Sumerian civilization was one of the earliest civilizations in human history, dating back to the 4th millennium BCE in the region known as Mesopotamia, which is located in present-day Iraq. The Sumerians are known for their remarkable achievements in the fields of agriculture, 
architecture, writing, and art, and their civilization laid the foundation for many of the cultural and societal developments that would come to define the ancient Near East. One of the most remarkable aspects of Sumerian civilization was their advanced system of agriculture. The Sumerians developed innovative irrigation techniques that allowed them to cultivate crops in the fertile soil of the Tigris and Euphrates river valleys. They also developed a system of crop rotation that helped to maintain soil fertility and increase agricultural yields. This system of agriculture allowed the Sumerians to support a large population and create surplus food, which in turn led to the development of urban centers. The Sumerians were also remarkable builders, and they are known for their impressive architecture. They constructed large, complex buildings, including ziggurats, which were towering structures that served as temples and were often the tallest buildings in their cities. The Sumerians also built elaborate irrigation systems, canals, and dams, which helped to regulate the flow of water and prevent flooding. Writing was another important achievement of Sumerian civilization. The Sumerians developed one of the earliest known writing systems, known as cuneiform, which consisted of wedge-shaped marks pressed into clay tablets. This system of writing allowed for the recording of laws, business transactions, religious rituals, and other important aspects of daily life. Sumerian art is also notable for its beauty and sophistication. The Sumerians were skilled at creating intricate works of art, including pottery, jewellery, and sculptures. Many of their works of art depicted religious themes and were used in religious rituals and ceremonies. Religion played a significant role in Sumerian civilization, and the Sumerians worshipped a pantheon of gods and goddesses. These deities were believed to control various aspects of life, such as the weather and agriculture. Sumerian religion was also closely tied to the ruling class, and the kings of Sumer were often believed to be divine beings, or were closely associated with the gods. Despite their decline, the legacy of the Sumerian civilization has endured. Many of their achievements and innovations have had a lasting impact on human history. For example, the Sumerian system of writing influenced the development of other writing systems, such as the Phoenician alphabet, which in turn gave rise to the Greek and Latin alphabets. The Sumerian system of agriculture also had a lasting impact on human history. Their innovative irrigation techniques and crop rotation system were adopted by other civilizations, and their methods continue to be used today. The ancient Sumerian civilization was a remarkable achievement of human history. They were innovators in the fields of agriculture, architecture, writing and art, and their civilization laid the foundation for many of the cultural and societal developments that would come to define the ancient Near East. While their civilization declined over time, their legacy has endured, and their achievements and innovations continue to influence human history to this day. Despite their remarkable achievements, the Sumerian civilization declined over time. The reasons for this decline are complex and multifaceted, but scholars have proposed several theories as to why this once great civilization fell. One of the most significant factors in the decline of the Sumerian civilization was environmental degradation. The Sumerians lived in a region with a hot and arid climate, and they relied heavily on irrigation to cultivate crops in the fertile soil of the Tigris and Euphrates river valleys. However, over time, the irrigation systems became less effective, as the soil became increasingly saline and the water supply became depleted. This led to declining agricultural yields, food shortages, and famine. Another factor in the decline of the Sumerian civilization was internal conflict and political instability. The Sumerian city-states were frequently engaged in warfare with one another, and this constant conflict led to political instability and social unrest. The ruling elite were often consumed with maintaining their power and influence, which diverted resources away from other aspects of society, such as infrastructure and education. External invasions were also a significant factor in the decline of the Sumerian civilization. The Sumerians were frequently invaded by outside forces, including the Akkadians and the Babylonians. These invasions weakened the Sumerian state and led to the fragmentation of their civilization. Religious changes also played a role in the decline of the Sumerian civilization. As the civilization declined, new religious beliefs emerged, 
and the Sumerian pantheon of gods and goddesses was gradually replaced by other deities. This led to a decline in the influence of the Sumerian priests, who had played a significant role in the governance of the city-states. Despite their decline, the legacy of the Sumerian civilization has endured. Many of their achievements and innovations have had a lasting impact on human history. For example, the Sumerian system of writing influenced the development of other writing systems, such as the Phoenician alphabet, which in turn gave rise to the Greek and Latin alphabets. The Sumerian system of agriculture also had a lasting impact on human history. Their innovative irrigation techniques and crop rotation system were adopted by other civilizations, and their methods continue to be used today. As of right now, the decline of the Sumerian civilization was a complex and multifaceted process, driven by factors such as environmental degradation, internal conflict, external invasions, and religious changes. Despite their decline, the legacy of the Sumerian civilization has endured, and their achievements and innovations continue to influence human history to this day. In the late 1980s, Russian Navy divers were conducting routine training exercises in Lake Baikal, the world's deepest and oldest lake located in Siberia. However, what they discovered during one of their dives was anything but routine. Several of the divers reported encountering strange humanoid creatures, sparking intense interest and speculation about what they had seen. The first reported encounter occurred in 1982, when a team of divers were exploring the depths of Lake Baikal. They claimed to have seen a group of human-like beings dressed in silver suits swimming around the lake. The divers were stunned by what they saw and immediately surfaced to report their discovery to their superiors. In the following years, other reports of humanoid encounters in Lake Baikal emerged. Some divers claimed to have seen humanoids measuring over six feet tall with humanoid features, while others described smaller creatures that resembled dolphins or mermaids. Some reported being chased by the creatures and experiencing a sense of extreme fear, going on to say that they didn't feel welcome and that the creatures would often chase them away. The Russian government has never officially confirmed or denied these reports, but they have been the subject of much speculation and interest in the paranormal community. Some believe the humanoids could be the result of secret experiments carried out by the Soviet Union during the Cold War, while others suggest they could be advanced beings or even remnants of an ancient civilization. As of right now, many people remain convinced of the existence of the Lake Baikal humanoids. Some have even made attempts to capture them or conduct further research into their existence, with one researcher saying that mysterious aircrafts have been observed above the lake and that they've even been seen entering the lake, but said that they do this without making a splash, which has caused some to suggest that these underwater beings also possess hyper-advanced technology. It is important to note that Lake Baikal is a unique and mysterious place in its own right, with many unexplained phenomena and mysteries surrounding it. It is home to a diverse range of aquatic life, some of which is found nowhere else in the world. The lake is also said to have healing properties, and has been a site of pilgrimage and spiritual significance for centuries. The divers who encountered the non-human entities reported that they launched a sudden counter-attack by unleashing high-powered sonar waves which caused a potent force that rendered all crew members unconscious and rapidly propelled them toward the surface. Rapidly ascending from great depths can have harmful consequences on our physical well-being, leading to a condition commonly referred to as the bends. Three members of the squadron suffered severe injuries, but managed to avoid this affliction. However, the other individuals required immediate transportation to a decompression chamber. Regrettably, there was only one recompression chamber in the vicinity, which was intended to accommodate only two individuals at a time. Driven by desperation, four men entered the chamber at once, hoping to save their lives. Unfortunately, this impulsive decision did not produce the desired outcome and as a result of their superior's hastiness, three people lost their lives, and those who survived were confronted with permanent disabilities that would alter the course of their lives. As of right now, the reports of Russian Navy divers encountering humanoid creatures in Lake Baikal are intriguing and mysterious, and it's caused some amateur researchers to suggest that the military is monitoring the area, saying that bright lights are often seen above the lake, 
which are usually followed by a black helicopter. The reports have sparked curiosity and interest in the paranormal community, and the legend of the Lake Baikal humanoids continues to captivate imaginations and inspire further investigation. Interestingly, some have suggested that these objects seen entering the lake are USOs, or unidentified submerged objects. These are a lesser-known phenomenon compared to their aerial counterparts. These objects are believed to be submerged underwater, and the US Navy has reportedly encountered them multiple times over the years. While these encounters have been shrouded in secrecy, some information has been leaked, giving a glimpse into this mysterious world. One of the most famous USO encounters occurred in 1971, when the USS Trepang, a nuclear submarine, was on a routine mission in the Arctic Ocean. Suddenly, the crew spotted a bizarre object moving at high speeds through the water. The object was said to be disc-shaped and had a dome-like structure on top. The crew tried to track it, but the object was moving too fast, and soon it disappeared into the depths of the ocean. Another incident reportedly occurred in 2004, when a US aircraft carrier was conducting routine exercises in the Pacific Ocean. The crew encountered a strange object hovering just above the water. According to reports, the object was approximately 40 feet in length and was shaped like a tic-tac. When fighter jets were sent to investigate, the object accelerated at an incredible speed, disappearing in a matter of seconds. These encounters have raised many questions about the nature and origin of USOs. Some researchers believe that these objects could be evidence of extraterrestrial activity, while others speculate that they could be advanced technology developed by rival countries. Another theory suggests that these objects could be natural phenomena such as underwater volcanic activity or bioluminescent organisms. While the exact nature of these objects remains a mystery, their existence has been confirmed by numerous witnesses, including military personnel and civilians. Some researchers believe that the high number of USO sightings could indicate that these objects have a base or outpost located in the depths of the ocean. The study of USOs remains a relatively unexplored field, but some researchers are working to shed light on this enigmatic phenomenon. The Ocean X team, for example, is a group of researchers and divers who have conducted several expeditions to investigate strange underwater anomalies. One of their most notable discoveries was the so-called Baltic Sea Anomaly, a mysterious circular object located on the bottom of the Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea Anomaly is an unusual object located on the floor of the Baltic Sea, which was discovered in 2011 by a Swedish ocean exploration company. The object has been described as a large circular or oval shape, with a diameter of approximately 60 meters and a height of around 8 meters. It is located at a depth of around 90 meters, and its precise origin and nature are unknown, leading to much speculation and debate among researchers and the public alike. There have been many theories about the Baltic Sea anomaly, with some suggesting that it may be a crashed aircraft, a natural rock formation, or even an ancient underwater city. However, although various theories have been put forward, the true nature of the object remains a mystery. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Baltic Sea anomaly is its shape. It appears to be a perfect circle or oval, which is highly unusual for a natural rock formation. Some researchers have pointed out that the object's shape is similar to that of a flying saucer or other mysterious aircraft, leading to speculation that it may be an advanced craft that has crashed in the Baltic Sea. Another interesting aspect of the Baltic Sea anomaly is its location. The object is located in an area of the Baltic Sea that was covered by ice during the last ice age, around 10,000 years ago. This has led some researchers to suggest that the object may be an ancient structure or city that was submerged when the ice melted. Despite much speculation, there has been little concrete evidence to support any of these theories about the Baltic Sea anomaly. A team of divers who explored the object in 2012 found that it was made of some kind of hard, smooth material, and that there were no visible signs of any kind of propulsion or steering system that might be expected if it were a crashed aircraft. Since the discovery of the Baltic Sea anomaly, there have been several attempts to investigate the object further. In 2014, a team of researchers from Sweden and Germany used sonar and underwater cameras 
to create detailed 3D maps of the object. They found that the object was much more complex than originally thought, with several smaller structures and what appeared to be staircases leading up to the main structure. However, despite these efforts, the true nature of the Baltic Sea anomaly remains a mystery. Some researchers have suggested that the object may be a natural geological formation, while others remain convinced that it is a man-made object of some kind. Until further research is conducted, the true origin and nature of the Baltic Sea anomaly will continue to be the subject of much debate and speculation. The Paris Catacombs, a vast subterranean labyrinth beneath the streets of Paris, have long captured the imagination of adventurers, historians and thrill-seekers alike. Originally built as quarries to mine limestone during the Roman era, the catacombs were later repurposed as a mass burial site in the 18th century, housing the remains of more than six million Parisians. In the 1990s, chilling found footage emerged, capturing the harrowing journey of a man who got lost within the catacombs and was never seen again. The Paris catacombs encompass more than 200 miles of underground tunnels, chambers and galleries, making it one of the largest ossuaries in the world. Over the centuries, the catacombs have served various purposes, from a clandestine meeting place for revolutionaries during the French Revolution to a hideout for members of the French Resistance during World War II. Despite the fascinating history of the catacombs, their vast and labyrinth nature presents a significant danger to those who venture off the designated paths. The maze of tunnels can be disorienting, and inexperienced explorers run the risk of becoming lost or trapped within the catacombs. In the early 1990s, a group of Parisian catacomb explorers, known as cataphiles, stumbled upon a discarded video camera deep within the tunnels. The camera contained a chilling piece of found footage, which captured the journey of an unidentified man as he ventured deeper into the catacombs, eventually becoming disoriented and lost. The footage shows the man's mounting panic and desperation as he navigates the seemingly endless maze of tunnels, before ultimately abandoning his camera and disappearing into the darkness. The found footage was later aired in a 2000 documentary titled The Forbidden Paris Catacombs, sparking widespread interest and speculation about the identity and fate of the lost explorer. The authenticity of the found footage has been a subject of debate among skeptics and enthusiasts alike. While some believe the footage to be a genuine documentation of the man's harrowing experience, others have argued that it could be an elaborate hoax staged to create a sensational story. Nevertheless, the footage has prompted numerous investigations and search efforts to uncover the identity of the lost explorer and determine his ultimate fate. Despite these efforts, the man's identity remains unknown and no trace of him has been found within the catacombs. Several theories have been proposed to explain the man's disappearance, ranging from the possibility that he succumbed to hypothermia or dehydration in the tunnels to the more sinister notion that he was intentionally led astray by malicious individuals or supernatural forces. Nonetheless, the existence of the footage can be supported by an argument, given that no one has come forward to claim the ownership of it ever since it was initially broadcasted almost two decades ago. Even those involved in the documentary haven't made much noise around it, leading many to believe that it's unlikely that they're benefiting from it financially. Assuming the authenticity of the found footage, the main concern is to uncover the fate of the individual. Investigating this specific topic has posed difficulties in terms of reliable sources, given the scarcity of information available. Although various sources have linked paranormal activity to the video, researchers who live close to the area believe that a more plausible explanation can be derived. The catacombs consist of tunnels that extend for 150 to 200 miles, making it easy to become disoriented and lost. As evident from past rescues of stranded teenagers, it's not uncommon for people to lose their way amidst the catacombs. With temperatures averaging at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, it's possible that the man in the video lost his bearings and eventually succumbed to hypothermia. The enigma of the found footage of the lost Paris catacombs explorer continues to captivate and mystify those who delve into the dark history of this subterranean ossuary. The chilling footage serves as a stark reminder of the dangers inherent in venturing into the catacombs as well as a testament to the enduring allure of the unknown. 
The fate of the lost explorer remains a mystery, shrouded in the shadows of the Parisian underworld and the murky depths of human imagination. The chilling atmosphere and macabre history of this subterranean world have given rise to countless legends, ghost stories, and tales of supernatural encounters. The Paris catacombs originated as limestone quarries during the Roman era, supplying materials for the city's construction. By the 18th century, Paris was grappling with the issue of overcrowded cemeteries, particularly the central cemetery of the Innocents, which was becoming a public health hazard. To address this problem, authorities decided to convert the abandoned quarries into an ossuary, a process that began in 1786 and continued until the mid-19th century. The bones from the overcrowded cemeteries were transported to the catacombs with great ceremony, blessed by priests and carefully arranged in artistic patterns. The dark, labyrinthine nature of the catacombs, combined with their macabre history, has fostered an atmosphere ripe for supernatural speculation. Over time, numerous legends have emerged, with some claiming that the tunnels are haunted by the spirits of those whose remains lie within, while others speak of the ghosts of revolutionaries and members of the French resistance who once sought refuge in the tunnels. Many visitors have reported inexplicable occurrences, such as sudden drops in temperature, unexplained noises, and even apparitions. Some believe that the spirits trapped within the tunnels are restless and tormented, drawn to the living who venture into their realm. In addition to ghostly encounters, there are also tales of mysterious creatures dwelling in the depths of the tunnels, further fueling the supernatural aura that surrounds this subterranean world. These legends have been perpetuated and amplified by popular culture, with the tunnels serving as the setting for numerous novels, films and television shows that explore the theme of the haunted and the unknown. The Paris catacombs continue to captivate and intrigue visitors from around the world, drawn to their chilling history and the potential for supernatural encounters. The legends of the haunted catacombs also serve as a source of inspiration for those seeking to delve into the realms of the paranormal. Many ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts have ventured into the tunnels, armed with equipment designed to detect and document supernatural phenomena, in the hope of capturing definitive evidence of the spirits that are said to dwell within. The haunting history of the Paris catacombs is a testament to the enduring fascination with the unknown and the supernatural. The chilling atmosphere, combined with the macabre history of this subterranean world, has given rise to countless legends and ghost stories that continue to captivate the imagination. As a site of cultural and historical significance, the catacombs serve as a powerful reminder of the mysteries of the afterlife, drawing visitors from around the world. Today, the tunnels house the remains of an estimated six million people, making them one of the largest ossuaries in the world. The tunnels are a significant cultural and historical site, offering a unique window into the city's past. They serve as a stark reminder of the fragility of human life and the passage of time. Each year, thousands of tourists descend into the depths of the catacombs, eager to experience the eerie atmosphere and learn about their history. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in cataphiles. Urban explorers who venture off the designated paths to explore the forbidden sections of the catacombs. While these adventures can be thrilling, they are also dangerous, as the tunnels can be disorienting and treacherous. Many who've explored the tunnels have said that there's evidence of residual haunting. Residual haunting is a term used in the field of paranormal research to describe a type of haunting that is believed to be a mere playback of past events, rather than an active interaction with an intelligent spirit. This phenomenon has been the subject of much debate and speculation among paranormal enthusiasts and skeptics alike. Residual haunting is a phenomenon in which seemingly paranormal occurrences appear to be replaying events from the past, often in a repetitive and consistent manner. These hauntings are believed to be the result of powerful emotions or traumatic experiences that have left an indelible imprint on the environment, causing the events to replay like a recording. Unlike traditional hauntings, which involve an intelligent spirit actively interacting with the living, residual hauntings are thought to be devoid of any conscious presence. Instead, they are said to be merely an echo of the past, with no ability to interact or communicate with the living. The concept of residual haunting has led to several theories attempting to explain the phenomenon. 
One popular explanation is the stone tape theory, which posits that certain materials, such as stone or metal, can absorb and store the energy of past events. When the right conditions are present, this stored energy may be released, allowing the events to replay in a seemingly paranormal manner. Another theory suggests that residual hauntings may be the result of a psychic imprint left by powerful emotions or experiences. This psychic energy may become embedded in the environment and can be perceived by individuals who are sensitive to such energy, resulting in the perception of a haunting. It is important to note that these theories, while intriguing, remain speculative and have not been empirically proven. Critics argue that the concept of residual haunting may be an attempt to rationalize seemingly inexplicable phenomena, attributing them to natural or psychological causes rather than supernatural intervention. The concept of residual haunting has found its way into various forms of popular culture, including literature, film and television. Stories of residual hauntings often focus on the eerie nature of witnessing past events unfold as if they were occurring in real time, with the characters in the story struggling to understand and come to terms with the phenomenon. These tales often serve as a metaphor for the enduring power of the past and its ability to continue to impact the present. Additionally, the concept of residual haunting can serve as a source of inspiration for those interested in exploring the mysterious and unknown realms of the paranormal. The existence of residual hauntings remains a contentious issue, with skeptics arguing that such phenomena can be more readily explained by psychological factors, such as suggestibility and the power of expectation, rather than supernatural intervention. However, proponents of the residual haunting theory point to the consistency and specificity of reported experiences as evidence of a genuine paranormal phenomenon. While definitive proof of residual hauntings remains elusive, the concept continues to fascinate and captivate those interested in exploring the mysteries of the paranormal world. Residual haunting is a captivating concept that offers a unique perspective on the nature of paranormal phenomena. While the existence of residual hauntings remains a topic of debate and speculation, the concept continues to intrigue and inspire those interested in the paranormal world. Whether seen as echoes of the past, psychic imprints, or a mere figment of the imagination, Residual hauntings serve as a powerful reminder of the enduring fascination with the unknown and the mysterious world beyond our understanding. The Amazon rainforest has long been a source of mystery and intrigue. While it is known for its incredible biodiversity and the diverse indigenous cultures that call it home, it has also been the site of numerous discoveries of artificial structures that have baffled researchers and fueled speculation about the history of the region. One of the most striking examples of an artificial structure in the Amazon is the so-called pyramids, or large square mounds that can be seen breaking the jungle canopy. These are large-scale structures that have been found throughout the region, and they are believed to date back to pre-Columbian times, although some researchers have said that they may be older. The large objects take a variety of forms, including circular and rectangular shapes, and some are massive, stretching for over a mile in length. Many of these structures have only become visible in recent years due to drone and satellite technology, which has allowed researchers to view the jungle from above, something that has only become possible in the last few decades. Due to this, a variety of interesting discoveries have been made, leading archaeologists and researchers to say that the Amazon rainforest is likely home to many undiscovered structures. In addition to these man-made structures, there have also been numerous reports of ancient ruins and artifacts found in the Amazon rainforest. Some of the most intriguing of these are the lost cities of the Amazon, which are said to be the remains of massive ancient settlements that were abandoned long ago. These cities are believed to have been built by advanced pre-Columbian societies, and some researchers have speculated that they may have been connected by a network of roads and waterways that allowed for long-distance trade and communication. Despite these discoveries, the study of the ancient history of the Amazon rainforest is still in its infancy, and there is much that remains to be discovered. One of the challenges of studying this region is the fact that much of it is covered by dense vegetation, which makes it difficult to identify and excavate ancient sites. In addition, the Amazon is a vast and complex ecosystem that is constantly changing, 
making it difficult to determine how ancient societies interacted with their environment. Despite these challenges, researchers continue to make exciting new discoveries in the Amazon rainforest, shedding light on the rich and diverse history of this incredible region. Whether it's the geoglyphs, terra preta soils, or lost cities, each discovery adds to our understanding of the people who have called the Amazon home for thousands of years. Interestingly, it's not just large megalithic structures that have been found throughout the Amazon rainforest. Mysterious lights have also been witnessed throughout the area, leading those interested in the unknown to suggest that the Amazon might be a hotspot. Mysterious aircrafts have been reported all around the world for decades, and the Amazon rainforest is no exception. The vast and largely unexplored wilderness of the Amazon has long fascinated enthusiasts, and there have been many reports of strange lights and other unexplained aerial phenomena in the region. One of the most famous incidents occurred in 1977, when a group of Brazilian military personnel were flying over the Amazon rainforest on a routine mission. Suddenly, they observed a bright object in the sky, which they initially believed to be an airplane in distress. However, as they flew closer, they realized that the object was something different and appeared to be a massive, saucer-shaped craft hovering silently in mid-air. The military personnel watched in awe as the craft emitted a blinding light and shot off into the distance at incredible speed. The encounter was documented in an official military report which stated that the object displayed an enormous amount of energy and an incredible level of technology. This is just one example of the many strange sightings that have been reported in the Amazon rainforest. Some people believe that the region is a hotspot for this type of activity due to its remote location and the relative lack of human activity in the area. There are also theories that suggest that sightings in the Amazon rainforest could be related to ancient civilizations that once inhabited the region. Some experts believe that these civilizations may have had contact with advanced beings and that the remnants of their advanced technology could be hidden deep in the Amazonian jungle. In addition to these mysterious lights, there have also been reports of other strange phenomena in the Amazon rainforest. For example, some people have claimed to have seen strange creatures, such as the legendary Mapinguari. Others have reported hearing strange noises, such as unidentifiable animal sounds or eerie whispering voices deep in the heart of the jungle. Despite the many reports of strange lights and other strange phenomena in the Amazon rainforest, there has been relatively little scientific investigation into these events. The dense vegetation and difficult terrain of the region make it extremely challenging for researchers to conduct thorough investigations, and there are many areas that have yet to be explored by scientists. As a result, the mystery of the Amazon rainforest remains largely unsolved. While some people believe that the region is a hotspot for advanced activity, others remain skeptical, pointing to the lack of concrete evidence to support such claims. As of right now, mysterious sightings in the Amazon rainforest have been reported for decades and have been the subject of much speculation and debate. While there are many theories as to the origin of these sightings, there is still much that remains unknown about the region and its mysterious inhabitants. As more research is conducted in the area, it is possible that we will uncover new clues about the strange phenomena that continue to occur in this remote and fascinating part of the world. The Amazon rainforest is known for its incredible biodiversity, but it is also home to some remarkable man-made structures that offer insights into the lives of ancient peoples. While many believe the Amazon rainforest was a pristine wilderness untouched by human hands until the arrival of Europeans, recent archaeological discoveries have challenged this view, revealing that indigenous populations have lived in the Amazon for at least 13,000 years. One of the most striking examples of these ancient structures is the geoglyphs of the Amazon, also known as Amazonian earthworks. These large-scale patterns and designs are made by removing topsoil and exposing the underlying subsoil, creating a visible contrast in color and texture. The geoglyphs were created by pre-Columbian societies between 500 BCE and 1500 CE and are found in areas that are currently forested. The purpose of these geoglyphs is still unknown, although theories range from ritual and astronomical purposes to markers for sacred spaces. The largest known Amazonian earthwork is the Sajama Lines in Bolivia, 
which runs for over 15 miles and is made up of straight lines, circles and other geometric shapes. The Sajama lines are so large that they can only be fully appreciated from the air, which has led some to speculate that the builders may have had a means of flight. Another interesting structure found in the Amazon is the raised fields of the Bolivian Amazon. These fields are elevated above the floodplain and are created by constructing walls made of soil and organic matter. The raised fields help to protect crops from flooding and improve soil fertility, allowing for more productive agriculture. In addition to these man-made structures, the Amazon rainforest is also home to many archaeological sites that reveal insights into the daily lives of ancient peoples. Excavations have uncovered evidence of complex societies that traded with neighboring regions. One such site is the city of Kuhikugu, which was occupied by a sophisticated society between 1050 and 1400 CE. The city was built on a series of terraces and featured a complex network of canals and causeways, suggesting that it was a hub for trade and commerce. The site also revealed evidence of intricate pottery, metalworking, and even the use of psychoactive substances. While the Amazon rainforest is often thought of as an impenetrable wilderness, these man-made structures and archaeological sites offer a glimpse into the rich history of the region. They also challenge the notion that the Amazon was untouched by human hands before the arrival of Europeans, revealing that indigenous peoples have been living in the region for thousands of years. However, the rapid destruction of the Amazon rainforest threatens the preservation of these important archaeological sites. It is crucial that efforts are made to protect and preserve these structures, not only for their historical and cultural value, but also for the insights they can offer into sustainable living practices that could be applied to modern agriculture and land management. As of right now, the Amazon rainforest is not only a vital ecological treasure, but also a repository of rich human history. The discovery of ancient structures and archaeological sites in the region challenges our assumptions about the region's past and highlights the importance of protecting these cultural treasures for future generations. Recent discoveries have shown that the earliest human inhabitants of the Amazon rainforest created thousands of artificial forest islands, known as forest islands, or terra preta, meaning dark earth in Portuguese. These islands are the result of the indigenous people's unique farming practices, which transformed the Amazonian landscape to suit their needs. The Amazon rainforest has always been viewed as a harsh and inhospitable environment for human settlement, with its dense canopy, poor soil quality, and lack of natural resources. Yet, research has shown that the Amazonian people not only survived, but also thrived in this environment. They created forest islands by clearing the forest floor and using organic materials to create a layer of nutrient-rich soil. This process, known as terraforming, allowed them to grow crops such as maize, beans and cassava in a sustainable way. The process of creating these forest islands was labour-intensive and required a high level of knowledge and skill. The indigenous people had to identify and cultivate the right kinds of plants, including those that would help enrich the soil. They also had to ensure that the forest islands were adequately irrigated and protected from flooding during the rainy season. The forest islands were not just agricultural land, they were also used for habitation, spiritual and cultural activities, and as burial sites. Many forest islands have been found with evidence of complex social structures, including houses, communal spaces, and ceremonial centers. Archaeological evidence suggests that these forest islands were occupied for centuries, with some being used continuously for thousands of years. One of the most significant benefits of the forest islands was their ability to support high population densities in an otherwise challenging environment. By creating sustainable agricultural systems, the indigenous people were able to support a thriving population, estimated to have been in the millions before the arrival of European explorers. The discovery of the forest islands challenges the long-held assumption that the Amazon rainforest was untouched by human activity before the arrival of Europeans. It also highlights the crucial role that indigenous people played in shaping the Amazonian landscape and the importance of their knowledge and skills. The forest islands also have significant implications for modern agriculture, and they demonstrate that it is possible to create sustainable agricultural systems in the Amazonian environment without taking down the rainforest. 
By using indigenous knowledge and practices, it is possible to promote agricultural development while protecting the environment and supporting local communities. As of right now, the discovery of the forest islands in the Amazon rainforest reveals the remarkable ingenuity and resourcefulness of the indigenous people who lived there. By creating thousands of artificial islands, they transformed the rainforest into a productive landscape that supported their population for centuries. These forest islands are a testament to the importance of indigenous knowledge and practices and have important implications for modern agriculture. Granger Taylor was a Canadian mechanic and pilot who gained notoriety for his mysterious disappearance in 1980. He was an eccentric figure who had a fascination with space and aliens, and he had reportedly made numerous attempts to contact extraterrestrial beings. Taylor's disappearance was unusual in that he left behind a note that seemed to suggest he was voluntarily leaving Earth on an alien spaceship. The note, which was found in his workshop, reads as follows. I have gone away to walk aboard an alien spaceship, as reoccurring dreams assured a 42-month interstellar voyage to explore the vast universe, then return. I am leaving behind all my possessions to you, as I will no longer require the use of any. Please use the instructions in my will as a guide to help. Love, Granger. End quote. Taylor's family and friends were mystified by his disappearance, and the note only added to the confusion. Many people believed that he had been abducted by advanced beings, while others speculated that he had staged his own disappearance as part of an elaborate hoax. Taylor had always been an unusual character, and he had a long history of strange behaviour. He was known for tinkering with machinery and building his own planes and cars, often using unorthodox methods. He also had a deep interest in the paranormal, and was known to dabble in astrology, numerology, and other esoteric subjects. Despite the speculation surrounding his disappearance, no trace of Taylor was ever found, and his fate remains a mystery to this day. Some people believe that he may have simply walked off into the wilderness and perished, while others maintain that he was indeed taken aboard a spaceship. The case of Granger Taylor has become something of a legend, and it continues to fascinate people around the world. Some people see him as a tragic figure, driven to madness by his obsession with advanced life and the unknown, while others view him as a visionary who was simply ahead of his time. Initially, it seemed like a harmless and amusing endeavor. However, as he constructed a radio transceiver, allowing him to communicate with advanced beings, based on the recurring dreams he had about aliens and mysterious aircrafts, concerns surfaced regarding his mental well-being. On the night that he went missing, nearby residents claimed to have heard a loud bang with some coming forward and saying that a bright light could be seen in the sky. This caused some to speculate whether Taylor had in fact been picked up by an advanced aircraft and the bright lights that were witnessed belonged to the same craft, while others said that the loud bang could have been due to dynamite. According to Taylor's friend Keller, a severe storm occurred in Duncan on the night in question, which makes it plausible that the noise heard was thunder. According to Taylor's belief, Keller was informed that the advanced beings would possibly come during bad weather, as it could serve as cover while they travelled. Interestingly, Taylor's possession of dynamite at the time of his disappearance should not be considered relevant, as those who knew him said that he was an expert with dynamite and said that he wouldn't have done anything to cause himself harm. Keller was involved in the construction of the spaceship that was built on Granger's farm. He firmly believes that his friend would not do anything that would cause harm, and describes him as an extremely intelligent, pragmatic, and wise individual. According to Keller, Taylor was the epitome of level-headedness. Keller and his family were among the last individuals to have seen Taylor alive. According to him, he would have noticed if Taylor had any unusual intentions, as he was a very intelligent person who lived his life normally. However, he believes that after being called a spaceman, he began to be seen as someone who was not level-headed. Regardless of what actually happened to Taylor, his story has become a powerful symbol of the human desire to explore and understand the unknown. It is a reminder that, despite our many technological advances and scientific discoveries, there are still mysteries in the world that elude us and that the quest for knowledge and understanding is never truly over. The Mysterious Disappearance of Experienced Hiker Karen Sykes 
On the 18th of June back in 2014, renowned hiker and climber Karen Sykes would disappear from the slopes of Mount Rainier, located in the state of Washington, after stepping out of view from her hiking partner for only a few minutes. For the investigators tasked with making sense of Karen's sudden vanishing, the case would be considered one of the most bizarre disappearances recorded on the slope of Mount Rainier. Even more difficult to explain, the years of experience held by Karen Sykes would make the investigation even more puzzling as the days for her search dragged on. According to the official report, Karen Sykes was a professional journalist who had more than 10,000 hours of hiking and camping under her belt by the time of her disappearance. Despite being 70 years old, friends and family of Karen Sykes revered her athletic abilities and would often remark that she was in perfect health despite her age. It was due to her many years of hiking experience and her amazing physical abilities at such an old age that Karen Sykes was well known within the American Northwest hiking community. After spending several years running her own private blog titled Karen Trails, in which the 70-year-old hiker would write about the many different hiking trails all across the American Northwest, including Washington, Oregon and Northern California, Karen Sykes would eventually be hired by both the Seattle Times and the Seattle Post-Intelligencer. While working for both newspapers, Karen Sykes would write several dozen articles focused on hiking tips and survival advice, which trails were the most pleasant and with the least amount of tourists, and many personal stories regarding her own hiking and climbing sessions over the years. Eventually, her reading fan base would grow to such a size that Karen Sykes would eventually publish several books on hiking across the state of Washington and interviewing some of the most skilled climbers in the United States. After co-authoring several book publications, Karen would take up a small hobby of professional photography, helping her to author another book on choosing the best trails for hikers, wishing to see amazing views, pass through areas rich with wildflowers, and stay completely safe while hiking. It would be by this point in her career that Karen Sykes would have accrued a vast amount of experience in hiking, climbing and scrambling, and was referred to by the Seattle Times as the guru of the trails. Yet, despite this vast amount of experience with the outdoors and other famous trail guides and climbers, on the 18th of June, 2014, a disaster would soon strike. According to Karen's boyfriend, as the two were getting ready in the morning of June 18th, Karen Sykes had told her boyfriend that she wanted to visit an area of Mount Rainier that she had visited several times in the past to help finish her research for a new article she was planning on writing about the trail. Expecting to spend the better part of an entire day, the two packed extra survival equipment, food, water, and overnight gear in the event that their hike took longer than usual. By the early afternoon, the couple were out on the slopes of Mount Rainier, following the safe open trails closer to the base of the mountain, with the highest point of the trail being around 5,000 feet, much lower than where people typically tend to disappear or get injured. According to Karen Sykes' boyfriend, Bob Morthorst, the couple were halfway up the trail when Bob needed to take a short break. Karen, who was still in good shape, decided to walk up the trail a little further to scope out the trail ahead before returning to where her boyfriend decided to rest. Morthorst would later tell investigators that Karen had only been gone for about 10 to 20 minutes when he started to grow worried and began to head up the trail to look for her. After about an hour of searching, Bob Morthorst was unable to locate any sign of Karen Sykes, even after wandering the wide open trail while calling out to her. Worried that something far more dangerous had occurred, he would immediately return to areas staffed by the National Park Service and would ask for a search and rescue effort to immediately be put underway. Bob Morthorst would later tell investigators that he was unsure of what had happened and whether or not Karen had been injured or merely wandered off of the trail by accident. Morthorst would remark that given her vast experience on those trails, it seemed highly unlikely that Karen Sykes could have gotten lost or wandered away from the obvious trail lines, even if she had forgotten a hiking map or any other equipment to help reorient herself. Despite her sudden vanishing, Hopes remained high for Bob Morthorst and members of the National Park Service who believed that she would be found and returned in only a few hours. Given the fact that the reported time of her disappearance was much earlier in the day, it also provided search and rescue with enough daylight to locate her before nightfall where temperatures were expected to plummet to unsafe levels. Additionally, 
Given the fact that the couple had each packed extra gear and supplies to survive an overnight stay, volunteers were in high hopes for the first 12 hours of her search. Within the first hour of her search, the National Park Service would bring together six ground crews made up of an average of three search and rescue volunteers each, two canine teams that were experienced in located lost hikers by picking up their scent and finding their tracks, as well as an airplane that flew over the area to try to find any signs of Karen Sykes around her expected trail. According to Bob Morthorst, the trail that the couple had planned on exploring was the Oihai Lakes Trail, a 13-kilometer long hiking trail that wrapped around the slope of Mount Rainier in wide open spaces with low vegetation and fields of surrounding wildflowers. Similar to Karen Sykes, Bob Morthorst also had a history in writing articles related to hiking and the outdoors for the Seattle Post Intelligencer, though focused more on the casual hiking and amateur outdoorsman categories. It was due to their work and Karen's desire to get photographs of the region that the couple planned on staying along the Oihai Lakes Trail, and so it was incredibly unlikely that Karen Sykes would have wandered away from the trail at any point during the hike. Armed with this information, the search and rescue teams would first search all along the trail and within a five-mile radius surrounding the trail in the hopes of stumbling across Karen, though next to no sign of her was uncovered by any of the ground teams, the canine teams, or the overhead aircraft. After the first day of searching for Karen Sykes, search and rescue teams started to grow nervous. The temperatures were believed to have plummeted to below freezing, and still no sign of where the 70-year-old hiker had travelled off to was uncovered. After a couple of days of non-stop searching, with investigators questioning hikers in the hopes of anyone having seen the 70-year-old woman prior to her disappearance, still, there was no evidence to help point the search and rescue teams in the right direction. In a last-ditch effort to locate Karen Sykes, the search and rescue teams expanded their search radius by a total of 20 miles from the Oihai Lakes Trail, closing down the majority of the park to prevent any contamination of sensitive sites or missing gear. On the third day of searching for Karen Sykes, after roughly 80 hours and an estimated 4,000 man-hours of searching, the search for Karen Sykes would be called to a halt after an older woman was found more than 15 miles away from the Oihai Lakes Trail. Due to the time that had passed, it was nearly impossible for friends or family to accurately identify, and so the search was suspended until a proper autopsy could help to identify the individual. In the meantime, investigators were uncertain if this was Karen Sykes, as the body was found an estimated 15 miles away from the trail, as well as in an area nearly impossible to traverse on foot. Search and rescue volunteers would describe the area as being in one of the roughest, steepest terrain of the national park, and in a more desolate region, not frequently visited or travelled on. It seemed incredibly difficult for investigators to explain how it would have been possible for Karen Sykes to have lost her path from the trail and to continue through an area far steeper and rougher than anywhere she knew she should have been. It would have been more likely for her to have turned around instead of continuing through the rough, steep terrain. Oddly enough, after the DNA tests were completed, the Pierce County Medical Examiner's Office would confirm that the individual that was found was Karen Sykes. According to the coroner's office, it was believed that signs of hypothermia were responsible for her passing, but after a closer inspection, the Pierce County Medical Examiner's Office would report that Karen's passing was caused by a heart attack. Although the later stages of hypothermia could cause blood flow issues and heart problems, it is far more likely for a person suffering from hypothermia to pass from kidney or liver failure. At first, the finding was so strange due to Karen's perceived athletic ability and good physical health that family and friends were suspicious of the finding. After investigations ended, the official primary cause of her passing would be deemed as hypothermia. Without further investigation, the passing of Karen Sykes was deemed an accident and no further actions were taken on the part of the investigators. Regardless of the official cause, friends and family remained puzzled about the nature of Karen's disappearance and recovery. How could Karen have ended up so far away from the trail and in steep rough terrain after walking away from Bob Morthorst for only 10 to 20 minutes? Even more strange was the lack of gear that had been found on her when she had been recovered. Given Karen's vast experience in the outdoors, and more specifically the slopes of Mount Rainier, her passing is only made more bizarre in light of the circumstances. In early 2021 in a small town in Brazil, 
Residents were left terrified after multiple sightings of a werewolf-like creature were reported. The creature was described as a tall, muscular humanoid with a canine-like face, long claws, and fur covering its body. The sightings were so frequent and widespread that the local government decided to impose a nighttime curfew to protect the residents. The panic was triggered by a video that went viral on social media, showing what appeared to be a werewolf walking on two legs through the streets of the town. The video was reportedly shot by a group of teenagers who were out at night and came across the creature. The footage, although blurry and shaky, shows a dark, humanoid figure walking towards the camera before disappearing into the darkness. The werewolf sightings sparked a wave of fear and speculation among the residents, with many believing that the creature was a supernatural entity or a cursed human. Some even speculated that the werewolf was a product of a government experiment gone wrong or a result of the town's proximity to a nearby military base. The local authorities were quick to respond to the situation, dispatching a team of police officers and military personnel to investigate the sightings. Oddly enough, around this same time, residents throughout Brazil reported that they witnessed teams of military officials patrolling the street at night, with one resident saying that they created a curfew so that they could hunt this creature down without being seen. However, no evidence was found to support the claims, and the team concluded that the sightings were likely a hoax or a case of mass hysteria. Despite the lack of evidence, the werewolf sightings continued, and the local government decided to impose a nighttime curfew. The curfew required all residents to be indoors by 10 in the evening, and anyone caught violating the curfew would face fines and possible imprisonment. Although the curfew was soon lifted, residents who lived close to nearby military bases said that they were certain that they had some involvement, and questioned whether something was released from one of the nearby bases, and that military officials then had to lock everyone inside their homes so that they could hunt and track it down. After the military came into the area, residents said that the werewolf sightings decreased dramatically. Legends of the werewolf date back to some of the oldest known mythologies all around the world, with accounts of attacks from shape-shifting men into dogs even being recorded in the modern day. Many of these reported encounters often overlap with similar claims of large, humanoid, dog-like creatures with bright red eyes known for their vicious, wolf-like savagery. The 1987 Northern Michigan Encounter of Luther Back in August of 1987, the owners of a small wooden cabin claimed that their cabin had been attacked in the night by a large animal they presumed to have been a bear. Unsure of what the animal was, and needing information surrounding the vandalism to provide to insurance companies, the owners then contacted the Department of Natural Resources from Baldwin, Michigan. After waiting around for some hours, several investigators from the field office arrived at the cabin and claimed that they were interested in examining the damage to the cabin to verify the animal attacks. Several investigators from the field office arrived at the cabin and claimed that they were interested in examining the damage to the cabin to verify the animal attacks. Although the owners originally believed the large animal to have been a bear, the gathered evidence from the game warden's investigation proved that the animal scratches were not from a typical bear vandalism and was most likely something else entirely. According to the Department of Natural Resources, the tracks and the claw marks left behind at the cabin more closely matched that of a very large dog. Surrounding the cabin and near the nearby muddy pathways were footprints of large dog tracks. On the windows of the cabin were prints of equally as large muddy paws that went as high as seven feet, and different parts of the roof of the cabin appeared to have also had evidence of muddy footprints. Additionally, closer examination showed that the frames of the windows and the doorway appeared to have been chewed in an attempt of the animal to have gained entrance to the cabin in the night, a behaviour uncommon of wolves in the region. Even more peculiar, Areas of the footprints seemed to reach up on the wall past seven feet in height, meaning that the animal would have had to walk on its hind legs and be at a height exceeding seven feet when standing. An official quote on the event is recorded as the following. Upon closer scrutiny, it was determined that the damage to the cabin had been done by a very large dog. It appeared that the animal had chewed into the wood frames of the building and the door screening in an attempt to gain entrance to the cabin. Officers found huge dog tracks all around the cabin, paw prints on the windows, 
and deep grooves made by a dog's teeth in the wood around the door and window. The damage inflicted was found to not be the work of an average dog, but one which was very large and capable of standing up and reaching seven feet up to the higher window levels. It didn't take long for the story of the cabin's destruction by a large dog to have reached the nearby town, with many of the locals soon making their way up to the cabin to see the evidence of the attack for themselves. Many of the local hunters and tour guides supported the claims that the prints and the attacks had to have been made by a large dog or wolf, and that the scratch marks were atypical of a standard bear attack. Several hunters offered to hunt down the creature for the owners of the cabin, whereas others believed that an ancient dire wolf could have been the culprit. This creature has been reported in various parts of the world, but mainly in North America. It is described as a creature that has the head and upper body of a wolf, and the lower body of a human. The first recorded sighting of the Dogman dates back to the 1700s, when French explorers reported seeing a creature with the head of a wolf and the body of a man in what is now known as Wisconsin. However, it wasn't until the late 1980s that the term Dogman was coined by a radio host in Michigan who received reports of sightings from local residents. The Dogman is often described as being around 7 feet tall and weighing up to 400 pounds. It is said to have sharp teeth, glowing eyes, and the ability to move quickly and silently. Many witnesses have reported feeling a sense of intense fear when encountering the creature, leading some to speculate that it may have supernatural origins. There have been several notable encounters with the Dogman in recent times. In 1987, a man named Steve Cook claimed to have had a face-to-face -face encounter with the creature while walking his dog in a park in Michigan. He described the creature as being around seven feet tall and having yellow eyes that seemed to glow in the dark. As of right now, people still report encountering the creatures, leaving them terrified and questioning what it was that they encountered. Antarctica, the Earth's southernmost continent, has long been a source of fascination and intrigue due to its remote location, extreme conditions and the mysteries that lie beneath its icy surface. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in reports of unidentified objects spotted above Antarctica. These sightings have fueled speculation about advanced activity, secret military bases, and hidden ancient civilizations. Just recently, someone on social media reported that they found a large object embedded in the snow, saying that a large trail could be seen behind the object, and suggested that whatever this thing is, could have crash-landed. The user who found the photograph said that they've spent countless hours looking across Antarctica in the hopes of finding something strange. The object appears to be in the shape of a disc, with the user saying that when they measured the object, it was just over 10 meters, but noted that the trail that can be seen directly behind the object measured in at over 250 meters. As of right now, there's not much to go by, but those who've seen this image have said that it's one of the clearest photographs of a mysterious object found in Antarctica and could be evidence of a mysterious downed aircraft. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time that an object like this has been found embedded in the snow, and it's caused researchers into the unknown to suggest that something strange may be going on down in Antarctica. Reports of mysterious sightings above Antarctica date back to the early 20th century, when explorers and scientists first began conducting expeditions on the continent. One of the earliest recorded accounts comes from the 1947 Operation High Jump, a United States Navy expedition led by Admiral Richard E. Byrd. During the operation, some crew members reported seeing unidentified objects moving at high speeds and performing unusual maneuvers. These sightings were never officially acknowledged by the United States government, and no concrete evidence was found to substantiate the claims. In more recent years, there have been numerous anecdotal accounts of sightings from scientists and personnel stationed at research bases across Antarctica. These accounts often describe unusual lights, metallic objects, and unexplained aerial phenomena observed in the skies above the continent. The advent of satellite technology and the availability of high-resolution imagery have provided researchers and enthusiasts with new tools to investigate sightings above Antarctica. In several instances, strange structures and objects have been identified in satellite images, fueling speculation about mysterious bases or secret military installations. 
While some of these findings have been debunked as natural geological formations or optical illusions, others remain unexplained and continue to generate debate among researchers and enthusiasts. The mysterious nature of sightings above Antarctica has led to various theories and conjectures. Some believe that these sightings are evidence of advanced activity, with Antarctica being a strategic location for bases due to its remote and inhospitable environment. Others suggest that these mysterious objects may be linked to secret military operations or advanced experimental aircraft being tested in the isolated region. Another popular theory posits that Antarctica is home to a hidden ancient civilization or remnants of advanced technology from a long-lost era. Proponents of this theory often point to anomalies in satellite images and unexplained structures as evidence for their claims. Investigating these sightings above Antarctica presents a unique set of challenges for researchers. The harsh climate, limited access, and logistical difficulties make conducting field investigations extremely difficult. Additionally, the continent's remote location and limited infrastructure often hinder communication and the sharing of information. Furthermore, the lack of corroborating evidence, such as photographs or videos, makes it difficult to verify anecdotal accounts of sightings. Finally, the secrecy surrounding military operations and the reluctance of governments to disclose information related to mysterious aircrafts create additional obstacles for researchers attempting to uncover the truth behind these phenomena. As of right now, the mysterious sightings above Antarctica have captivated researchers, enthusiasts and the general public alike. While many questions remain unanswered, these enigmatic occurrences have fueled intriguing theories and speculation about mysterious activity, secret military operations, and hidden ancient civilizations. As technology continues to advance and access to Antarctica improves, researchers may find new ways to investigate these sightings and unravel the mysteries of the frozen continent. Until then, sightings above Antarctica will continue to captivate our imagination and challenge our understanding of the unknown. Over the years, Various stories have been shared by people who've explored this area, and one of these comes from a seasoned captain. In the year 1911, Captain Edward Sullivan, a seasoned explorer and cartographer, embarked on a daring expedition to the Antarctic continent. His goal was to map uncharted territories and uncover the secrets hidden beneath the ice. Little did he know that he would encounter a phenomenon that would challenge his understanding of the world and leave him questioning the limits of human knowledge. Captain Sullivan's journey began with a small crew, each member hand-picked for their skills and expertise in navigating the harsh Antarctic environment. Among them was a young and ambitious astronomer named Robert Fitzgerald, who sought to observe the pristine night sky, unblemished by the light pollution of the modern world. As the days turned into weeks, the expedition pushed further into the icy wilderness. Captain Sullivan and his crew faced treacherous conditions battling fierce winds and freezing temperatures. Despite the harsh environment, the team remained undeterred, driven by their shared passion for exploration and discovery. One fateful evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, the Antarctic sky was illuminated by a stunning aurora. The crew gathered on the deck of their ship to marvel at the breathtaking display of swirling colours. It was then that Robert, gazing through his telescope, noticed an unusual object hovering in the sky. He told the captain to look in the direction of where the object was, and as Captain Sullivan peered through the telescope, he was astonished by what he saw. There, amidst the dancing lights of the aurora, was a metallic object, unlike any he had ever seen. It seemed to defy the laws of physics, moving gracefully through the air as if unbound by the constraints of gravity. For several nights, the object appeared in the sky, each time performing an array of inexplicable manoeuvres before vanishing as suddenly as it had appeared. Captain Sullivan and his crew debated the nature of the mysterious object, with some suggesting it was a secret military aircraft, while others believed it to be an advanced craft from a distant world. Determined to uncover the truth, Captain Sullivan devised a plan to approach the object and attempt to communicate with its occupants. As night fell, the crew prepared a series of signal flares, hoping to attract the attention of the enigmatic visitors. When the object reappeared in the sky, Captain Sullivan and his crew launched the flares in a synchronized pattern. 
To their amazement, the object seemed to respond, emitting a series of bright flashes that mirrored the crew's signal. In the days that followed, Captain Sullivan and his crew continued to communicate with the object, exchanging light signals in a language that transcended words. With each interaction, the crew grew more convinced that they were witnessing a phenomenon far beyond human comprehension. As the expedition neared its end, Captain Sullivan decided to document the encounter in his journal, detailing the strange object and its otherworldly behavior. However, fearing ridicule and disbelief from his peers, he vowed to keep the discovery a secret, known only to the members of his crew. Years later, as Captain Sullivan lay on his deathbed, he entrusted the journal to his closest confidant, Robert Fitzgerald. With a heavy heart, he implored the young astronomer to share the story of their encounter with the world, in the hope that future generations might seek the truth and unravel the enigma of the Antarctic skies. And so, the tale of Captain Edward Sullivan and his crew passed into legend, a testament to the boundless curiosity of the human spirit and the mysteries that lie beyond the reach of our understanding. Antarctica, Earth's southernmost continent, has long captivated the imagination of scientists, explorers, and the general public due to its vast, frozen landscape and the secrets that lie beneath its icy surface. One such enigma is the mysterious gravitational anomaly located beneath Wilkes Land, a large region in East Antarctica. This massive anomaly has been the subject of extensive research and speculation, with theories ranging from the remnants of an ancient civilization to a massive impact crater. The Wilkes Land anomaly was first identified in the early 2000s when researchers from The Ohio State University detected unusual gravitational fluctuations while analyzing data from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment satellites. The gravity measurements revealed a massive circular structure beneath the ice, approximately 300 miles in diameter, and located more than a mile below the surface. This enigmatic feature immediately caught the attention of scientists worldwide, who sought to determine the cause of the gravitational disturbance and the nature of the hidden structure. Since its discovery, numerous scientific expeditions and research projects have been conducted to investigate the Wilkes Land anomaly. Using advanced technologies such as airborne radar and satellite imagery, researchers have been able to study the subglacial structure in greater detail. Despite these efforts, many aspects of the anomaly remain elusive and the exact nature of the structure is still a subject of debate among scientists. One of the most significant findings came from a study conducted in 2006 by a team of researchers led by Ralph von Frieser and Laramie Potts. Analyzing the gravity and magnetic data from the region, they proposed that the anomaly was caused by a massive impact crater formed by an asteroid collision approximately 250 million years ago. According to their research, the impact event may have contributed to the largest mass extinction in Earth's history, known as the Permian-Triassic extinction event, during which nearly 90% of all species on Earth perished. While the impact crater theory has gained significant traction within the scientific community, alternative theories have also been proposed to explain the Wilkes land anomaly. Some researchers suggest that the gravitational disturbance could be the result of a massive volcanic structure or a cluster of smaller volcanic formations beneath the ice. This theory is supported by the fact that Antarctica is home to numerous subglacial volcanoes and geothermal hotspots. Another theory, popular among researchers into the unknown, is that the Wilkes Land anomaly could be the remnants of an ancient civilization or advanced technological structure. Proponents of this theory often point to the anomaly's circular shape and seemingly artificial appearance as evidence for their claims. While this theory has not gained widespread acceptance within the scientific community, it continues to fuel speculation and debate among those interested in the mysteries of Antarctica. The Wilkes Land Anomaly is a fascinating enigma that has captured the attention of scientists and the public alike. Its discovery has sparked extensive research and investigation, yet many aspects of the anomaly remain shrouded in mystery. As technology advances, and our understanding of Antarctica's geology and history deepens, researchers may one day unlock the secrets of the Wilkes Land anomaly and unravel the mysteries hidden beneath the Antarctic ice. Until then, this enigmatic feature will continue to challenge our understanding of the Earth and its past, 
and serve as a reminder of the unexplored frontiers that still await discovery. As one of the most remote and mysterious places on Earth, Antarctica has long been a source of fascination and speculation. In recent years, reports have emerged of mysterious objects and unusual phenomena observed in the skies above the icy continent, including alleged sightings of unidentified objects. Someone on social media just posted an interesting photograph that was taken in Antarctica. The image in question shows what appears to be a huge circular opening, with the user saying that it looks like something crashed into the ice. Large cracks can be seen around the outside of the hole, which made some say that whatever it was must have impacted the ice at a tremendous speed. Interestingly, some who believe in the unknown have suggested that the hole may have been created by something emerging from below. Unidentified submerged objects are a relatively unknown phenomenon that has been reported around the world. These objects are similar to unidentified flying objects, but instead of being seen in the sky, they are seen entering or exiting bodies of water such as oceans, lakes and rivers. USOs have been reported for centuries, but their origins and purpose remain a mystery. USOs are often seen in areas with high levels of naval activity, such as near military bases, ports and shipping lanes. Some reports describe USOs as being shaped like saucers, while others describe them as being more like submarines or strange glowing orbs. Witnesses have reported seeing USOs enter and exit the water at high speeds, perform impossible maneuvers, and disappear without a trace. USOs have been reported in many other locations around the world, including the Baltic Sea, the Bermuda Triangle, embedded in the ice in Antarctica, and the Pacific Ocean. Despite the high number of reported sightings, very little scientific research has been done on USOs. Some believe that USOs may be the result of underwater natural phenomena, such as gas bubbles or underwater volcanic activity. However, these explanations do not account for the reported maneuvers and high speeds of USOs. The lack of scientific research on USOs may be due in part to the difficulty of studying objects that are underwater. Unlike traditional sightings, USO sightings are not easily captured on camera and it is difficult to send equipment or divers to investigate the area where the objects were seen. As of right now, those who've seen this image have suggested that it was created by one of these USOs. Although there's little evidence to back this up, researchers point to objects that have been found embedded in the ice across Antarctica as proof of this. According to some researchers, Antarctica may be a hotspot for mysterious activity due to its isolated location and extreme weather conditions. With the continent largely uninhabited by humans, it is possible that any unusual sightings or encounters could go unnoticed or unreported for extended periods of time. In addition to a number of mysterious reports surrounding strange aircrafts that have been seen above Antarctica, there have been numerous officials who've come forward with their own encounters about what they witnessed while working here. Some researchers have suggested that these objects could be related to secret military or government operations, while others believe that they may be advanced aircrafts. The remote and unexplored nature of the continent leaves the possibility open for further investigation and exploration. In recent years, advances in technology have allowed researchers to better explore and study the region, raising the potential for further discoveries and insights into this mysterious and fascinating corner of the world. Despite the numerous reports of alleged sightings in Antarctica, there are also many skeptics who argue that the phenomenon may be nothing more than misidentified natural or man-made objects. With so much still unknown about this remote and extreme environment, it is difficult to say for sure what the truth may be. One of the reasons why it's hard to investigate these aircrafts is because Antarctica is the coldest, driest and windiest place on the planet. This landmass, which covers an area of about 14 million square kilometers, is surrounded by the Southern Ocean and the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, which makes it difficult to reach and explore. One of the primary reasons that Antarctica is difficult to explore is its extreme weather conditions. The continent is the coldest place on Earth, with temperatures that can drop to as low as minus 128 degrees. The weather in Antarctica is also very unpredictable, and sudden storms can arise without warning, making it hazardous for any expedition. 
Another significant challenge that explorers face in Antarctica is the isolation of the continent. It is located far from any major population centers, and the distance makes it difficult and expensive to transport people and equipment to the continent. The isolation also means that any rescue operation is challenging and can take days or even weeks. Moreover, Antarctica is covered by a thick layer of ice, which can reach a depth of over two miles in some places. This makes it difficult to navigate and explore the continent, as most of the land is inaccessible by foot or vehicle. Additionally, the ice is continuously moving, which can create dangerous holes that can be impossible to detect without proper equipment and training. Another challenge of exploring Antarctica is the lack of infrastructure. Unlike other continents, Antarctica has no permanent human habitation except for a few scientific research stations. This means that any expedition to Antarctica requires a lot of preparation and planning to ensure that all necessary equipment and supplies are brought along. The continent is covered with ice sheets, glaciers and frozen lakes, making it a challenging and inhospitable environment to explore. However, Antarctica was not always a frozen desert. Millions of years ago, it was a lush, green and thriving rainforest. Scientists have long been fascinated by the mystery of Antarctica's past climate. They have collected sedimentary rock, fossils and other evidence that reveal that Antarctica was once a warm and humid environment, teeming with life. The fossil record indicates that around 170 million years ago, Antarctica was part of the supercontinent Gondwana, which also included South America, Africa, Australia and India. At that time, Antarctica was situated much closer to the equator and enjoyed a subtropical climate with high rainfall. Around 50 million years ago, Antarctica began to cool and drift southwards, away from the equator. As it moved further away, the climate became colder and the vegetation began to change. The rainforest slowly gave way to tundra and eventually to ice as the continent drifted towards its current location. The evidence for Antarctica's rainforest past is found in the rocks and fossils that have been uncovered by scientists. The fossils include the remains of a wide variety of plants, including ferns, cycads and conifers. These plants would have required a warm and wet environment to grow, and their presence suggests that Antarctica was once a lush and thriving rainforest. In addition, scientists have found the remains of dinosaurs, early mammals and other animals that lived in the rainforest, providing further evidence of the continent's past. But how did Antarctica go from a rainforest to a frozen desert? The answer lies in the continent's unique geography and climate. Antarctica is a landlocked continent surrounded by oceans, which prevents warm currents from reaching it. In addition, the continent's position at the South Pole means that during the winter, it receives no sunlight for months at a time, causing the temperatures to plummet. As a result, the rainforest gradually gave way to tundra and ice, and Antarctica became the frozen desert that we know today. In recent years, scientists have become increasingly interested in studying Antarctica's past climate to better understand how the Earth's climate is changing. They have used ice cores, sediment samples, and other data to reconstruct the continent's climate history and to look for clues about how the climate might change in the future. Antarctica's icy landscape is filled with many mysteries that continue to captivate the imagination of scientists and the public alike. One such mystery is the existence of underground lakes in Antarctica, which have only recently been discovered. Underneath this ice sheet there are hidden lakes, some of which have been isolated from the rest of the world for millions of years. The first of these lakes to be discovered was Lake Vostok, located in East Antarctica. It was discovered in the 1970s by Soviet scientists who were drilling for ice cores. They found that their drilling equipment was suddenly descending too quickly and they realized that they had drilled into a large body of water. However, it wasn't until the 1990s that the existence of Lake Vostok was confirmed after scientists used radar to map its shape and size. Lake Vostok is the largest of the underground lakes in Antarctica with a surface area of around 12,000 square kilometers and a depth of over 800 meters. The water in the lake is also incredibly clear, thanks to the absence of sunlight and the fact that it has been isolated from the rest of the world for so long. The lake is also one of the most extreme environments on Earth, 
with temperatures as low as minus 89 degrees. Since the discovery of Lake Vostok, several other underground lakes have been found in Antarctica, including Lake Mercer, Lake Willens, and subglacial Lake Conway. Like Lake Vostok, these lakes are isolated from the rest of the world and have been cut off from the surface for millions of years. Some of them have been found to contain microorganisms, leading scientists to speculate that they may harbor unique forms of life. The discovery of these underground lakes has opened up new areas of research for scientists who are interested in studying the lake's geology, chemistry, and biology. However, exploring these underground lakes is no easy feat. The extreme conditions and the fact that they are located deep beneath the ice sheet make it incredibly challenging for scientists to access them. In some cases, they have to drill through several kilometers of ice to reach the lake, which can take years to accomplish. Despite the challenges, scientists continue to study these underground lakes, hoping to unlock the secrets of Antarctica's icy landscape. Antarctica is the only continent without an indigenous human population and has remained virtually untouched by human activity, except for scientific research. Despite its desolate and harsh environment, Antarctica is a land of natural beauty and scientific curiosity, with many mysteries and secrets yet to be uncovered. Exploration of Antarctica began in the early 19th century, with the first documented sighting in 1820. The first human expedition to Antarctica was in 1821, but it was not until the early 20th century that significant exploration and scientific research began. Since then, many expeditions have been launched to explore the continent, but despite the efforts, only a small fraction of Antarctica has been explored. To date, it is estimated that less than 1% of Antarctica's landmass has been explored. This is due to the continent's harsh and unpredictable weather conditions, treacherous terrain, and remote location. Antarctica is also covered by a thick layer of ice that makes it difficult to access and explore its interior. Additionally, strict environmental regulations govern human activity in Antarctica to protect its unique ecosystem, making it more challenging to conduct research. Most of the exploration and research conducted in Antarctica has been concentrated along its coastline, where it is easier to access and set up scientific stations. However, much of the continent's interior remains unexplored, and scientists are eager to uncover the secrets hidden beneath the ice. The subglacial lakes we just mentioned are believed to contain unique microbial life that could provide insights into the origins of life on Earth and the possibility of life elsewhere in the universe. Despite the challenges of exploring Antarctica, there is still much to discover and explore on this remote and mysterious continent. The legend of Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, has been around for centuries. Tales of a large, hairy, bipedal creature roaming the wilderness have fascinated and terrified people for generations. While many sightings of Bigfoot have been reported throughout North America, some of the most intriguing accounts come from Yellowstone National Park. In 2015, a hiker claimed to have spotted Bigfoot while hiking in Yellowstone. The witness described a large, ape-like creature with shaggy hair and an estimated height of over seven feet. The sighting occurred near the park's Old Faithful Geyser, a popular tourist attraction. The rangers attempted to track the creature, but lost it in the dense forest. Despite their extensive search, they were never able to find any evidence of the creature. While some may dismiss these sightings as tall tales or hoaxes, many people believe in the existence of the creature. The individual reported feeling both exhilarated and frightened by the experience. While this sighting may seem far-fetched to some, it is not the first time that the creature has been reported in Yellowstone. In fact, there have been several reports of Sasquatch sightings in the park over the years. Many of these sightings have been dismissed as hoaxes or misidentifications of other animals, but some remain unexplained. One of the most famous Bigfoot sightings in Yellowstone occurred in the 1970s. Two park rangers were on patrol when they spotted a large, hairy creature walking through the woods. They described the creature as being over seven feet tall, with long arms and a powerful build. Some researchers have dedicated their lives to studying and investigating reports of the creature, and point to the fact that many different cultures around the world have legends of a large, hairy creature similar to Bigfoot, and argue that there must be some truth to the stories. 
In addition to eyewitness accounts, there is some physical evidence that suggests the creature is in fact genuine. Footprints attributed to the creature have been found in many locations throughout North America, including Yellowstone. These footprints are often much larger than those of any known animal and appear to show a distinct pattern of five toes and a mid-tarsal break, a feature not found in other primates. Despite the intriguing evidence and numerous sightings, there is still no concrete proof of the creature's existence. Many skeptics argue that the creature is simply a myth and that the reported sightings are either hoaxes or misidentifications of other animals. Others argue that Bigfoot is a real flesh-and-blood creature but that it has managed to evade capture and scientific study due to its elusive nature. While the truth about the creature may never be known, the legend of this mysterious creature continues to captivate and intrigue people around the world. Yellowstone National Park, with its vast wilderness and remote locations, remains a popular destination for those hoping to catch a glimpse of Sasquatch. Whether the sightings are real or not, the stories of these creatures in Yellowstone will continue to be passed down for generations to come. Interestingly, one Yellowstone National Park ranger shared their encounter on social media. It was a typical day for Ranger Jackson as he patrolled the grounds of Yellowstone National Park. He had seen his fair share of wildlife encounters, from grizzly bears to mountain lions, but what he saw next would shake him to his core. As he was walking through a dense wooded area, he noticed something moving in the distance. It was a large, hairy creature walking on two legs. At first, Jackson thought it might be a bear, but as it got closer, he realized it was something much more unusual. The creature was covered in thick brown hair and stood at least eight feet tall. Its arms were long and muscular, and its face was covered in fur. It had deep-set, dark eyes that seemed to stare right through Jackson. He froze unsure of what to do. The creature didn't seem aggressive, but it was definitely not something he had ever seen before. As it got closer, he could see that it was a Bigfoot, a creature that many people believed only existed in myths and legends. Jackson watched in awe as the creature passed by him, heading deeper into the woods. He couldn't believe what he had just seen, as he had always been skeptical of Bigfoot sightings, but now he was convinced that they were real. Over the next few days, Jackson couldn't stop thinking about the encounter. He knew that he needed to report it to his superiors, but he was worried about how they would react. After all, these sightings were not something that they typically dealt with in the park. Eventually, he decided to come forward with his story, and he was surprised to find that his superiors were more open-minded than he had expected. In fact, they had received other reports of Bigfoot sightings in the park over the years, but had never been able to confirm them. The park authorities decided to investigate further, setting up cameras and traps in the area where Jackson had seen the creature. They hoped to get photographic evidence of Bigfoot's existence, but their efforts were in vain. Despite their best efforts, no further sightings of the creature was reported. Jackson continued to patrol the grounds, always on the lookout for any signs of the elusive creature. Years passed and Jackson eventually retired from the park service, but he never forgot the encounter he had with the creature. He knew that he had seen something truly special, something that most people would never have the chance to witness. To this day, Jackson still visits the park from time to time, hoping to catch another glimpse of the creature that had captivated him all those years ago. The earliest report of one of these creatures dates back to the late 19th century, the incident occurred in the area of Ape Canyon, near the base of Mount St. Helens in the state of Washington. The story goes that in 1924, a group of miners were prospecting in the mountains when they claimed to have had an encounter with a group of large, hairy creatures. The miners reported seeing footprints that measured 16 inches in length and 7 inches in width and were believed to have been made by the creatures. The miners claimed that they were able to follow the footprints for a distance of about five miles, and during that time they reported hearing strange noises, such as whoops and screams, coming from the surrounding forest. They also claimed that they saw the creatures at a distance, and that they were covered in long, dark hair. The miners' story became widely publicized in the local newspapers, and it was eventually picked up by the national media. The incident helped to spark interest in the existence of the creature, 
and led to many other reported sightings of the creature in the years that followed. However, it is worth noting that the story has been met with skepticism by many researchers, who have pointed out inconsistencies in the miners' accounts. For example, some have questioned the fact that the miners claimed to have followed the footprints for such a long distance, given that the area was covered in dense forest and difficult terrain. Despite these doubts, the incident remains an important part of the creature's lore and has contributed to the ongoing fascination. In the years since the Ape Canyon incident, numerous other sightings of the creature have been reported and many researchers continue to investigate the possibility of its existence. In addition to the Ape Canyon incident, there have been other early reports of Bigfoot, including accounts from Native American tribes in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States. These tribes have long had their own legends and stories about the creature, which they refer to by various names, including Sasquatch and Skookum. One of the most well-known of these legends is the story of the Wild Man of the Woods, which was said to inhabit the forests of the Pacific Northwest. According to the legend, the creature was covered in long shaggy hair and had a foul odour. It was also said to be very elusive and would only rarely be seen by humans. These early reports of Bigfoot have helped to fuel the ongoing fascination with the creature and have inspired many researchers to continue investigating its existence. Due to the creature's odour, it's caused some researchers to suggest that these are some of the earliest reports of the skunk ape. This large creature is a humanoid believed to inhabit the southeastern United States, particularly in the swamps and wetlands of Florida. The creature is said to be similar in appearance to Bigfoot, but with longer hair and a distinct odour that earned it its nickname. Despite numerous sightings and alleged evidence, the existence of the skunk ape remains unproven and many skeptics consider it to be a product of folklore. The first recorded sighting of the creature occurred in the late 19th century, when a group of hunters claimed to have seen a large, hairy creature in the Florida wilderness. Since then, there have been numerous sightings and reports of encounters with the creature. Many witnesses describe it as being between six and eight feet tall, with a muscular build and a distinctively foul odour, which some speculate may be a defence mechanism against predators. In addition to eyewitness accounts, there have been several alleged pieces of physical evidence associated with the skunk ape. Footprints claimed to belong to the creature have been found throughout the southeastern United States, with some measuring up to 17 inches in length. In 2000, a grainy video emerged that purported to show the creature in the Florida Everglades. However, the video has been criticized for being unclear and inconclusive. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the legend of the skunk ape continues to persist in Florida and throughout the southeastern United States. Some people have even gone so far as to dedicate their lives to researching the creature and gathering evidence of its existence. However, skeptics argue that the skunk ape is simply a product of folklore, and they point out that many supposed sightings of the creature are from unreliable witnesses or have alternative explanations, such as misidentified animals or hoaxes perpetrated by individuals seeking attention or profit. In addition, they note that despite decades of alleged sightings and evidence, no conclusive proof of the creature's existence has ever been found. As of right now, despite numerous sightings and alleged evidence, its existence remains unproven and many skeptics remain unconvinced. These creatures have been a topic of interest and speculation for decades. Reports of sightings of the creature have been recorded all over the world, but it seems that Bigfoot encounters in national parks are more common than in any other location. The vast and remote wilderness areas of national parks with their rugged terrain and dense forests, provide a perfect habitat for the elusive creature. Sightings in national parks are usually reported by hikers, campers and park rangers. These encounters vary from brief sightings of the creature to more prolonged and detailed observations. While some encounters are frightening and disturbing, others are more benign, with the creature simply being observed from a distance. One common way the creature is encountered in national parks is through tracks or footprints left behind. These tracks are often found in remote areas, away from established trails and roads, and can be difficult to locate. However, when they are found, they provide compelling evidence of the creature's existence. Park rangers and researchers often investigate these tracks, taking plaster casts and measurements, 
and analyzing them to try to learn more about the creature's behavior and movements. Another way the creature is encountered in national parks is through vocalizations. These sounds can be heard at night when the forest is quiet, and they are often described as high-pitched screams or howls. While some of these vocalizations may be attributed to known animals, others are more mysterious and unexplainable. Some park rangers have even reported seeing the creature with their own eyes. These sightings are usually brief and happen at a distance, with the creature quickly disappearing into the dense forest. Park rangers are often trained in wildlife observation and can identify many animals by their behavior and characteristics, but these creatures remain an enigma. There are also reports of them stealing food and other supplies from campsites in national parks. These encounters are usually frightening for campers, who may wake up in the middle of the night to find their food and gear scattered around the campsite. However, these incidents are rare and are more likely to be caused by other animals, such as bears or raccoons. It is important to note that not all encounters in national parks are real. Many reports are hoaxes or misidentifications of known animals. However, there are a significant number of encounters that are credible and have been investigated by park rangers and researchers. As of right now, these encounters in national parks are fascinating and add to the mystique surrounding the elusive creature. While there is no conclusive evidence of the creature's existence, the reports of encounters in national parks provide an intriguing glimpse into the mysteries of the wilderness. As more research is conducted, perhaps one day we will have definitive proof of its existence. Located about nine miles west of Ellensburg, Washington, there is reportedly a seemingly infinite hole in the ground. A man identifying himself as Mel Waters made a call into a well-known paranormal radio program in 1997. The radio program was Coast to Coast AM. The popular radio show that's based in the United States covers a broad range of subjects, with a particular focus on discussions of the paranormal. The pit has since been referred to as Mel's Hole and remains a topic of interest and speculation. For many years, a supposedly boundless abyss puzzled residents near its location. After its exposure by waters, it garnered significant attention, gaining legendary status. Although some people questioned the veracity of Waters' extravagant assertions about the hole, many listeners were captivated, eager to learn more. Mel's Hole is considered one of the most enigmatic locations in the United States, attracting the intrigue of many curious individuals. Back in February 1997, Waters shared accounts of a well on his land that appeared to have mystical properties and was believed to be cursed, captivating the host and audience of the show. During the early days of settlement, a location in Kitsitas County, Washington was notoriously referred to as the Devil's Hole by the first settlers who lived there. The owner kept the exact location undisclosed. In April 2000 and January 2002, follow-up calls were made with the station, and Waters' stories took an even stranger turn. Interestingly, little did anyone know that Mel's Hole, as it would become known, would continue to captivate the public's interest for a long time. The enigmatic hole was frequently utilized as an all-natural garbage dump by Waters, his neighbors, and the previous owners. Despite years of dumping household waste, furniture, and construction debris into the hole, it never seemed to reach its limit. Eventually, Waters became interested in its depth and decided to carry out some tests to see how deep it was. During his initial appearance on the radio program, he recounted his efforts to determine the depth of the hole by deploying a substantial quantity of fishing line, saying that around 8,000 feet of it was used. However, according to Waters, the line did not extend to the bottom. The fishing line was the starting point of the bizarre events, and Waters suggested that this measuring caused something to happen. Oddly enough, not long after conducting these measurements, Waters states that one of his neighbors buried their pet dog in the hole, but to their surprise, the dog returned back to life and appeared to be unharmed in the nearby woods. The canine was identified by its collar, yet it failed to acknowledge its owner or obey his vocal commands. In a separate statement, Waters disclosed that Mel's hole had peculiar impacts on certain common items. Art Bell and his audience were captivated as Waters shared the peculiar behavior of metal objects and portable radios when they were in close proximity to the nine-foot-wide opening of the hole. According to Waters, 
When he held metals near the entrance, they would transform into different substances or metals without explanation. Additionally, he shared a peculiar anecdote about bringing his radio to the pit and tuning it to his preferred station, only to hear unfamiliar voices, antiquated music, and obscure programs. During his experimentation at the pit, Waters shared details of his various experiments, each of which yielded a more disturbing outcome than the previous one. He called up the radio station for the last time and shared some new details about what had happened at the hole during his most recent visits, including him lowering an ice-filled bucket at a depth of over 1,500 feet, only to discover that the ice not only stayed warm, but also transformed into a combustible material, something that he couldn't explain. During this appearance on Coast to Coast AM, Waters shared other strange incidents that had happened at the hole, including one of his neighbours seeing a beam of blacker than black light emanating from it. He also detailed that screams could be heard coming from the hole, and that those voices sounded like they were in pain. The conversation about Mel's hole eventually gained enough traction to draw the attention of the federal government. In a subsequent call, Waters shared that, on one occasion, as he was making his way to the pit, he was approached by a well-dressed individual in a black suit. The man explicitly instructed Waters that he could no longer approach the hole, and Waters witnessed individuals in infectious disease suits standing behind him. Shortly thereafter, the government rented out the property and provided a substantial sum to Waters to evacuate the premises. Waters agreed to the terms and relocated to Australia. The men in black agents have become an iconic symbol in popular culture often depicted as mysterious individuals dressed in black suits who possess extraordinary powers and are involved in mysterious encounters. These enigmatic figures have captured the imagination and intrigue of people around the world, inspiring numerous stories, movies and urban legends. While their origins and true purpose remain shrouded in mystery, the concept of the men in black agents continues to fascinate and entertain. The men in black law traces its roots back to the 1950s and 1960s, a period marked by an increased interest in mysterious aircraft sightings and alleged encounters with advanced beings. However, these agents have also shown up when people have reported paranormal encounters, with one account detailing that they showed up on Skinwalker Ranch during the height of its activity. According to accounts, the men in black agents are said to appear shortly after a person has had a strange encounter or has knowledge of unusual phenomena. They often arrive unannounced, displaying an uncanny knowledge of the individual's experiences, which has led to speculation that they possess advanced surveillance or intelligence gathering capabilities. These agents are described as wearing black suits, hats and sunglasses, giving them an air of mystery and anonymity. Witnesses often describe their behavior as cold and emotionless, leading to theories that they may be either advanced beings themselves or government operatives tasked with keeping extraterrestrial phenomena under wraps. One of the most intriguing aspects of the men in black agents is their alleged ability to exert control over witnesses, suppressing or manipulating their memories of the encounter. Some individuals claim to have experienced missing time, distorted memories, or a sense of psychological manipulation after encountering these mysterious figures. These accounts have fueled speculation that the men in black agents possess advanced mind control or memory-altering capabilities. The enduring popularity of the men in black agents can be attributed, in part, to their representation as guardians of secret knowledge and protectors of the status quo. They represent a nexus of power, mystery and control, with their actions often veiled in secrecy and hidden agendas. These elements make for compelling storytelling allowing us to explore themes of secrecy, hidden truths, and the suppression of information. For thousands of years, people all across the world have been encountering large humanoids. Interestingly, many of these encounters happen close to bodies of water, but very few people have had an encounter while under the water. This happened to one individual who shared their experience on social media. As a snorkeling enthusiast, Michael had explored many lakes across the United States, but he had never encountered anything like what he was about to experience. It was a beautiful summer day, and Michael decided to take his snorkeling gear and explore a remote lake located in Washington that he had heard about. He hiked for a few hours through the dense forest to reach the lake and set up his gear near the shore. 
He took a deep breath and plunged into the clear water. As he swam deeper into the lake, Michael noticed that the water was getting colder and the visibility was decreasing, but he kept swimming, excited to discover what lay beneath the surface. Suddenly, he saw something moving in the distance. At first, he thought it might be a large fish, but as it came closer, he realized that it was too big and too human-like to be a fish. He froze, unsure of what to do. As the creature came closer, Michael saw that it was a large, hairy creature that stood on two legs. It had broad shoulders and long arms that hung down to its knees, and it was using its strong legs to propel itself through the water. Its face was obscured by long hair, but Michael could see its large, deep-set eyes. Michael was stunned by this encounter, as he had heard stories of people encountering these creatures in the woods, but he never imagined he would come face to face with one in the water. He tried to swim away, but the creature was too fast. As it approached him, it grabbed him by the leg and pulled him towards the bottom of the lake. Michael reported that it held him tightly, staring at him with its intense eyes. Michael realized that the creature was not trying to harm him, but was simply curious, saying that it was like it was inspecting him. After a few moments, the creature released Michael and swam away, disappearing into the depths of the lake. Michael swam back to the shore, his heart pounding with fear. He sat on the shore, trying to process what had just happened. He had never believed in this creature before, but now he was convinced that they were real. He thought about what he had seen and wondered if anyone would believe him. Michael knew that he had to share his experience with the world, and he reported that he contacted local researchers who specialized in these types of sightings, hoping that they would be able to answer some questions he had. They were skeptical at first, but Michael's sincerity and detailed description convinced them that he had seen something extraordinary. The researchers returned to the lake with Michael and set up equipment to try to capture evidence of the creature. They used underwater cameras and microphones to record the sounds and movements of the lake. Days went by and nothing happened. Michael reported that this encounter is something that he will never forget and said that he continues to explore lakes and rivers in search of evidence of the elusive creature. For decades, people have reported sightings of this mysterious creature, which researchers into the unknown have said inhabits forests and wilderness areas across the United States. While there have been reports of this creature in nearly every state, some states seem to have more sightings than others. One state in particular has garnered a reputation as the Bigfoot capital of the country, and that state is Washington. Washington state has long been associated with these sightings, and the first modern-day sighting was reported in Washington back in 1958 when a man named Jerry Crew discovered large footprints near his construction site. The prints were later attributed to one of these creatures, and the story became a topic of fascination and speculation in the area, with people heading out into the wilderness in the hopes of spotting one of these elusive creatures. Since that time, Washington has become known as one of the most active regions for these types of sightings, and according to the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, Washington has had over 700 reported sightings, the most of any state in the country. These sightings range from brief glimpses of a large, hairy creature to extended encounters with multiple witnesses. There are several reasons why Washington may have more sightings than other states. One of the main reasons is the state's vast, rugged wilderness areas. Washington is home to several large national forests, including the Olympic National Forest, which covers over one million acres. These areas are largely untouched by human development and provide ample habitat for a large, elusive creature, with those who work in the area saying that you wouldn't even know if one of these creatures was standing several meters in the distance, as some of these areas are so thick that it would provide perfect coverage. Another reason why Washington has so many sightings is its climate. The state's cool, wet weather provides ideal conditions for a creature that is said to be adapted to living in the dense forests and mountainous regions of the Pacific Northwest. Despite the high number of reported sightings, there is still much debate over whether the creature actually exists. Skeptics argue that many reported sightings can be attributed to misidentifications of known animals, such as bears or large deer. Others believe that sightings are simply the result of hoaxes or the human imagination. However, many researchers argue that there is ample evidence to support the existence of the creature. They point to the large number of sightings, 
as well as the discovery of footprints and other physical evidence that cannot be explained by known animals. Some researchers have even claimed to have captured audio recordings of Bigfoot vocalizations and have found hair samples that do not match any known species. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in studying Bigfoot as a legitimate scientific phenomenon. Organizations like the North American Wood Ape Conservancy have conducted extensive research and investigation into these types of sightings, using advanced technology and methods to gather evidence and analyze reported sightings. Despite the ongoing debate over the existence of the creature, there is no denying that its possible existence has captured the imagination of people around the world. Its legend has spawned countless books, movies and TV shows, and continues to fascinate both believers and skeptics alike. As of right now, Washington state has become known as the Bigfoot capital of the country, with more reported sightings than any other state. While the existence of Bigfoot remains a topic of controversy and debate, the high number of reported sightings in Washington and other regions suggests that there may be more to this mysterious creature than skeptics are willing to admit. As interest in this creature continues to grow, it is likely that researchers will continue to investigate this fascinating and elusive creature in the years to come. The concept of time travel has long captivated the human imagination and sparked fascination and curiosity across cultures and generations. The very idea of journeying through time, either to revisit the past or explore the future, holds a profound allure for many. One alleged time traveller just recently announced that something bad is going to happen. The individual in question said that his name is Alexander and he claimed to be a time traveller from the future. He appeared dishevelled wearing clothes that seemed out of place and carried an air of urgency and foreboding. He spoke of a future society on the brink of collapse, ravaged by environmental degradation, social unrest and economic inequality. His words painted a grim picture of a world plagued by wars, scarcity of resources and a complete breakdown of societal structures. He warned that unless immediate action was taken, this impending catastrophe would occur within the next five years. Users on social media listened with a mix of disbelief and concern. Some dismissed Alexander as being delusional, while others contemplated the possibility of his claims. They pondered the repercussions of ignoring his warning and the potential consequences for their own lives and future generations. Although the idea of Alexander being a time traveller seemed far-fetched, his message weighed heavily on those who had read it. Many voiced their concerns with how the world is and said that it's likely that things are going to get worse in the future. Alexander posted one more on social media, telling people once again that things will get much worse before they get better, and told people that an uprising will happen within the next five years, saying that people couldn't deal with the conditions any longer. Some pointed out that these claims are rooted in reality, with one of Alexander's warnings being about famine. The issue of famine and its potential future impact is a complex and multifaceted one, while it is challenging to predict with certainty, there are several factors that suggest the possibility of increased risks of famine in the future. One of the primary factors contributing to concerns about future famine is the growing global population. As the world's population continues to expand, the demand for food resources increases. Coupled with environmental challenges, land degradation and water scarcity, meeting the food needs of a larger population becomes more difficult. If proper measures are not taken to enhance agricultural productivity, improve distribution systems, and address environmental concerns, the risk of food shortages and subsequent famines could rise. Changing weather patterns, extreme weather events and rising temperatures can have detrimental effects on agricultural production. Heat waves, droughts, floods and shifts in rainfall patterns can lead to crop failures, livestock losses and reduced food availability. Vulnerable regions that heavily rely on agriculture as their main source of food and income are particularly at risk. If adaptation strategies and resilient agricultural practices are not implemented, the impacts on food production may exacerbate the risk of famine. Furthermore, economic factors, including poverty, play a significant role in determining the vulnerability of populations to famine. Alexander warned that we have to prepare for this because as of right now, there's no way of stopping it. Another alleged time traveller is that of Andrew Basiago. Andrew Basiago is a controversial figure 
known for his claims of being a participant in a secret government project involving time travel and teleportation. While his assertions have gained attention and sparked curiosity among some individuals, they are met with skepticism by many within the scientific community and the general public. Basiago asserts that he was involved in a classified project called Project Pegasus during his childhood in the late 1960s and early 1970s. According to his accounts, the project involved sending individuals, including adolescents, through time and space using advanced technologies. Basiago claims to have been selected as a participant in these experiments due to his exceptional abilities and intelligence. One of Basiago's most remarkable claims is that he was sent back in time to witness historical events, including significant moments such as Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address in 1863. He asserts that these experiences were part of the government's efforts to gather intelligence and alter the course of history. Basiago has shared detailed accounts of his alleged time travel experiences, including specific dates, locations, and interactions with historical figures. He has presented photographs that he claims provide evidence of his presence during these time-traveling excursions. However, critics argue that the authenticity and reliability of these photographs are questionable and they lack verifiable evidence to support his claims. Furthermore, Basiago's accounts of time travel and teleportation go against our current understanding of physics and the limitations imposed by the laws of nature. The concept of time travel, especially backward time travel, remains highly speculative and is not supported by scientific consensus. While scientists have explored theories such as wormholes and time dilation, the practicality and plausibility of these ideas are yet to be fully understood or realized. Additionally, Basiago's claims lack independent corroboration, making it challenging to assess the veracity of his experiences. The absence of credible witnesses or other participants from Project Pegasus further undermines the credibility of his accounts. Skeptics argue that the lack of collaboration or support from others who allegedly participated in these clandestine projects raises doubts about the existence of such initiatives. Basiago's assertions have been met with skepticism by researchers, scientists and the general public. His claims have not been subjected to rigorous scientific scrutiny or replicated under controlled conditions. Without substantial evidence, it is challenging to accept his accounts as reliable or accurate representations of historical events or time travel experiences. It is worth noting that mainstream scientific and academic communities remain unconvinced and cautious in their assessment of his assertions. The scientific method, which relies on empirical evidence, testable hypotheses and peer review, demands a higher standard of proof than what Basiago has presented thus far. While Basiago's claims may be captivating and fuel the imagination, it is crucial to approach them critically and with skepticism. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and until compelling, verifiable evidence is presented, it is reasonable to question the validity of his assertions. As of right now, Andrew Basiago's claims of involvement in a secret government project involving time travel and teleportation are met with skepticism and scrutiny by the scientific community and the general public. While his accounts of time travel experiences may capture the interest of some, they lack the necessary evidence and independent corroboration to be considered credible or scientifically valid. It is important to approach such claims with a critical mindset, relying on empirical evidence and rigorous scientific investigation to assess their plausibility. Scientists don't know why hundreds of birds are getting sick. Birds are a crucial part of the world's natural ecosystem. Without them, much would be lost. Now, scientists are racing to figure out why they are falling sick en masse to stop a potential tragedy from unraveling. In the Midwest and southern regions of the United States, birds are passing away and falling sick at alarming rates, with no explicit explanation. An estimated seven states are affected, Blue jays, European starlings and grackles are among those most affected by the mysterious disease spreading through the bird world. According to avian biologist Kate Stankard of the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources, we are experiencing an unusual amount of bird mortality this year. We have yet to figure out what the problem is. The condition seems to be pretty deadly. 
The sickly birds are found with puffy eyes, often crusted over with pus and many suffer from seizures and suffer from an inability to stay balanced. Biologists who have examined the birds claim that they act blind even when they have perfectly healthy eyesight and are mentally or instinctively lacking. For example, they cease to fly away when approached, a common avian behavior that ensures their safety. This suggests the sickness removes a bird's self-preservation instincts, making it susceptible to external dangers. In Stankard's words, the birds often sit still, often kind of shaking. Stankard asserts that hundreds of birds across the United States are struggling with the mysterious illness and emphasizes the problem is no longer a minuscule one, but a nationwide issue which worsens each year. Biologists across America promise that they are doing all they can to uncover the cause of this phenomenon. A multi-state research group has formed in an attempt to research the sickness further and hopefully discover a cure to administer into the wild. Even when a cure is found, there is some speculation about how one might get it out into the ecosystem safely. Investigating the issue is time-consuming, requiring samples to be analyzed several times during lab tests to obtain definitive results and often come back inconclusive. Theories have arisen as to what might have caused the illness. Wildlife biologist Laura Kearns poses that pesticides might be causing this widespread avian pandemic and suggests she has heard other people claim a heightened population of cicadas are to blame. Pesticides have been known to negatively impact not only the insects they are made for, but larger ecosystems because mammals and birds feed on poisoned insects, causing the toxicity to affect them. This is not helped by the fact that many pesticides are outlawed in various countries around the world for their extreme toxicity. According to Kearns, in Ohio alone, hundreds of birds have been found, all perishing from the same cause, the unknown sickness. Despite the initial belief that the sickness was a return of the infamous avian influenza, all tests to prove this have come back negative. This illness is something entirely new, and scientists are unprepared. Sick birds from Kentucky have since been sent for analysis at the University of Georgia to be tested by the Southeastern Cooperative Wildlife Disease Study. New Mexican wildlife biologists have also begun reporting abrupt avian fatalities and a shocking decline in their populations. By now, the total avian population loss across America might have reached far beyond 100,000. Unusual Animal Behavior Preceding the 2011 Japan Earthquake Earthquakes are terrifying. As all forces of nature, they destroy all in their wake and can cause many casualties, not to mention millions, if not billions of dollars worth of damaged property. Yet, to add to their terror, animals have been spotted behaving in mysterious ways when earthquakes are about to occur. It's long been known that animals sense oncoming natural disasters, and some scientists believe animal behavior can be analyzed to predict when and where such earthquakes might happen, as it's difficult to predict natural disasters. The specifics as to how these animals know danger is coming or why are not yet definitively known. In 2011, on March 11th, a terrible earthquake took place in Japan and gave researchers much insight into the phenomenon. An estimated 20,000 people perished or disappeared that day, highlighting it as a dark day in Japanese history. Researchers investigated animal behavior prior to the earthquake and their questionnaires uncovered that several hundred pet owners in the region experienced strange behavioral patterns in their animals before the disaster. Cat and dog owners were questioned respectively, and 351 out of 1,962 pets were reported to behave strangely. The odd behaviors included increased restlessness, a factor linking all the cases. Cows were also investigated, and research revealed that cows yielded less milk the closer they were to the earthquake's epicenter a week before the earthquake occurred. The fact that animal behaviors were a minority and not a majority brings some doubt to the idea that animal instincts can be used to predict earthquakes, but researchers believe that the project shows promise. Whereas the cow's milk yield fell the week leading up to the natural disaster, the cats and dogs behaved agitated and restless on the day of or the day before the earthquake. Owners reported symptoms of biting owners, panic, barking loudly, hiding, climbing high trees, meowing pathetically and taking kittens outside. 
In 1995, a similar study was conducted in Japan before the Great Hanshin earthquake. In that report, over half of the pet owners declared strange animal behaviors. Mice in Kobe, one of the cities affected by the earthquake, began fleeing the region en masse the day before. The same thing happened with birds and insect populations, though they fled an estimated hour before the earthquake. It's believed that because animals, dogs and cats especially, can hear sounds inaudible to humans and feel frequencies, they are aware of incoming disasters. Animals have been found to be more sensitive to the natural world regarding changes in the atmosphere and gravity. It's speculated that earthquakes possess physical attributes, such as the release of carbon monoxide and ultra-low frequencies which alert animals to brewing trouble. Scientists discover a continent that had been missing for 375 years. Continents are massive. It might come as a surprise then that scientists recently found a brand new continent hidden away for hundreds of years. A group of geoscientists uncovered the continent of Zealandia, known in the Maori tongue as Tarua Maui. The continent has been recorded but seemingly faded from history books. The continent is believed to have been connected to Gondwana a supercontinent that existed an estimated 500 million years ago and encompassed a massive portion of both Australia and Antarctica. The very first mention of the continent in the Western world comes from Abel Tasman, a Dutch merchant and sailor from 1642. Tasman remarked his desire to find a mysterious Great Southern Continent in hopes of etching his name into history, a task he struggled with. He had a conflict with the Maori but was informed by the tribes that a giant landmass resided in the east. Despite Tasman's endless travels, he never uncovered the mythic Great Southern Continent. In 2017, that changed. At some point in history, billions of years ago, the continent tore away from the supercontinent of Gondwana for reasons yet unknown by scientists. At long last, 375 years after Tasman's journey, the continent was finally found. There has been speculation surrounding the mysterious and fabled Zealandia long before its finding. Only now do scientists agree in its existence, all those millions of years ago. Most of Zealandia is flooded, the murky depths concealing it all this time. Yet once the underwater landmass was investigated, it led scientists to wonder why they had not realized its existence sooner. Currently, researchers are trying to etch the history of Zealandia onto paper, to map its existence, its separation from Gondwana, and its downfall into the endless oceanic depths. According to scholar Nick Mortimer, if you think about it, every continent on the planet has different countries on it, but there are only three territories on Zealandia. The continent's strangeness adds to its scientific and geological appeal. Our world is a bizarre place, so we can never truly know what lurks in the skies or beneath the waves. The SR-71 Blackbird is one of the most iconic and legendary aircraft in aviation history. Developed by Lockheed Martin in the early 1960s, the Blackbird was designed as a high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft capable of flying at speeds of over Mach 3 or three times the speed of sound. Its sleek, futuristic design and impressive performance capabilities quickly earned it a reputation as one of the most advanced and technologically sophisticated aircraft ever created. The origins of the Blackbird can be traced back to the late 1950s, when the United States Air Force began looking for a replacement for its aging fleet of U-2 reconnaissance planes. The new aircraft would need to be capable of flying at even higher altitudes than the U-2 and would also need to be faster and more agile. However, there's one aircraft that outperforms the SR-71 Blackbird in every category, but as of right now, no one knows who owns it. Although several ideas have been put forward, the aircraft doesn't even have an official name, and this has led eyewitnesses to call it the Black Triangle due to its shape and dark appearance. With no visible propulsion system, outmaneuvering jets that have been observed chasing it, and having the ability to hover motionless without making a sound, this aircraft is easily one of the most sophisticated aircrafts ever witnessed. So, with so many sightings and photographs, why do we know so little about it? The ownership of black triangles remains a mystery, as there is no concrete evidence to suggest who or what is responsible for these mysterious aerial phenomena. 
While some theories have been put forward to explain their origin, there is still much that remains unknown about these strange objects in the sky. Black triangles are a type of unidentified object that have been reported by witnesses all over the world. They are typically described as large, triangular-shaped objects that are silent and move with a smooth, fluid motion. Some witnesses have reported seeing lights or other unusual features on these objects, while others have described them as completely black and featureless. One popular theory regarding the ownership of black triangles is that they are of advanced origin. This theory suggests that these objects are piloted by intelligent beings from other planets or star systems who are visiting Earth for unknown reasons. Supporters of this theory point to the fact that black triangles often exhibit flight characteristics that are far beyond what is currently possible with human technology. They also note that these objects seem to be able to maneuver in ways that defy the laws of physics, suggesting that they are not bound by the same constraints as conventional aircraft. However, there is no concrete evidence to support this theory, and it remains a subject of speculation and debate. Some skeptics argue that black triangles are likely the result of misidentifications, while others suggest that they may be the result of secret military technology or other human-made objects. Another theory regarding the ownership of black triangles is that they are part of a secret military program. This theory suggests that these objects are actually advanced aircraft or drones that have been developed by a government or military organization and that their unusual appearance and flight characteristics are the result of advanced technology. Supporters of this theory point to the fact that black triangles have been reported in areas near military bases or other sensitive installations. They also note that some witnesses have reported seeing military aircraft or personnel in the vicinity of these objects, suggesting that they may be linked to classified military operations. However, like the advanced theory, there is no concrete evidence to support the idea that black triangles are part of a secret military program. While it is certainly possible that some of these objects may be advanced military aircraft or drones, there is no proof that this is the case. As of right now, the ownership of black triangles remains a mystery, and there is no clear evidence to suggest who or what is responsible for these strange aerial phenomena. While theories have been put forward to explain their origin, none of these theories have been conclusively proven, and much remains unknown about these mysterious objects in the sky. Reports of black triangles have been documented for decades, and there are even some accounts that date back centuries. While the precise origin and nature of these mysterious aerial phenomena remains a subject of debate and speculation, there is no denying that they have captured the imaginations of countless witnesses and researchers over the years. One of the earliest documented reports of a black triangle comes from the 1561 celestial phenomenon over Nuremberg. The event, which was witnessed by thousands of people, involved the appearance of a strange black object in the sky, which was described as being triangular in shape and emitting a series of loud, booming sounds. While the exact nature of the Nuremberg event remains unclear, it is often cited as one of the earliest examples of a black triangle sighting. In more recent times, reports of black triangles have become more frequent, with numerous sightings reported in the United States and around the world. One of the most famous of these sightings occurred in the Hudson Valley area of New York State in the 1980s, where a series of sightings of large, triangular-shaped objects were reported over a period of several years. Another well-known sighting occurred in Belgium, where a series of black triangles were reported by numerous witnesses, including police officers and military personnel. The objects were described as being silent and able to hover in the sky for extended periods of time and were witnessed by thousands of people over the course of several months. Since that time, reports of black triangles have continued to be documented around the world with witnesses describing objects that range in size from small drones to massive, silent craft that block out the stars. Some witnesses have reported seeing lights or other unusual features on these objects, while others have described them as being completely black and featureless. The fact that black triangle sightings have been reported for centuries suggests that these objects are not a recent phenomenon and that they have been appearing in the skies over our planet for a long time. However, it is important to note that reports of these objects have increased in frequency in recent decades, likely due to a combination of increased public awareness and improved technology that makes it easier to capture photographic and video evidence of these sightings. 
Despite the fact that black triangles have been reported for so long, there is still much that remains unknown about their origin and nature. Others have suggested that black triangles may be related to more traditional sightings of unidentified aircraft, and that they are simply another manifestation of the mysterious aerial phenomena that have been reported by witnesses for centuries. As of right now, reports of black triangles have been documented for centuries, with sightings reported around the world and dating back to at least the 16th century. While the precise nature and origin of these objects remains a subject of debate and speculation, there is no denying that they have captured the imaginations of countless people over the years. Some have suggested that the Black Triangles actually belong to the mysterious Aurora program. The Aurora aircraft is a mysterious and highly classified aircraft that has long been rumoured to exist within the United States Air Force. Despite decades of speculation and rumours, very little is known about the Aurora, and the details surrounding its development and capabilities remain shrouded in secrecy. The origins of the Aurora can be traced back to the late 1980s and early 1990s when a series of strange sonic booms were heard over California and other parts of the western United States. The booms were heard by thousands of people, and many speculated that they were the result of a secret aircraft being tested by the United States government. Over the years, rumours and speculation about the Aurora continued to circulate, with many suggesting that the aircraft was a successor to the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, capable of even higher speeds and altitudes. Some even claimed that the Aurora was capable of travelling at six times the speed of sound, and that it was equipped with advanced stealth technology and other cutting-edge features. Despite the numerous rumours and reports surrounding the Aurora, very little concrete information has ever been released about the aircraft. In fact, the existence of the Aurora has never been officially confirmed by the United States government, and it is not clear whether the aircraft ever actually existed in the first place. Some experts have suggested that the rumours about the Aurora may have been a deliberate misinformation campaign by the United States government, designed to distract and confuse foreign intelligence agencies and other potential adversaries. Others have speculated that the aircraft may have been a prototype or experimental aircraft that was never deployed in significant numbers. Despite the lack of concrete information about the Aurora, the rumours and speculation surrounding the aircraft continue to capture the imaginations of aviation enthusiasts around the world. Some have even suggested that the Aurora may have been part of a larger, secretive black budget programme operated by the United States government, which is thought to be responsible for the development of numerous advanced technologies and weapons systems. Whether or not the Aurora actually existed, its legacy continues to be felt within the aviation community and it remains a subject of fascination and intrigue for many. The rumours and speculations surrounding the aircraft serve as a reminder of the incredible advances in aerospace technology that have taken place over the past several decades, and of the ongoing efforts by governments around the world to maintain a technological edge over potential adversaries. As of right now, the Aurora aircraft remains one of the most mysterious and enigmatic aircraft in aviation history. Despite decades of rumours and speculation, very little concrete information has ever been released about the aircraft, and its existence remains shrouded in secrecy. While the exact nature and capabilities of the Aurora may never be fully known, its legacy continues to be felt within the aviation community, and it serves as a testament to the ongoing efforts by governments around the world to maintain a technological edge in the face of evolving threats and challenges. Since the dawn of space exploration, Numerous astronauts have claimed to have encountered unidentified objects while in space. Many of these sightings have been dismissed by skeptics as mere hallucinations or reflections of light, but others remain unexplained, and have left some wondering if there is more to the universe than we currently understand. One of the most famous of these encounters occurred during the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, when astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong reported seeing a strange glowing object following them as they made their way to the moon. The object appeared to be in a fixed position relative to the spacecraft, leading some to speculate that it may have been an advanced craft. Another notable encounter occurred when astronaut James McDivitt reported seeing a cylindrical object that he could not identify. The object appeared to be rotating and emitting a high-pitched sound leading McDivitt to speculate that it may have been a spacecraft of some kind. Story Musgrave 
is a retired NASA astronaut who has made six space flights during his career. However, during one of those missions, he had a strange encounter that he could not explain. In 1996, Musgrave was on board the space shuttle Columbia on the STS-80 mission when he saw a mysterious object in space that he described as a snake. The incident occurred during a 15-day mission when Columbia was orbiting the Earth at an altitude of about 190 miles. Musgrave, who was a payload specialist on the mission, was operating a video camera to film a tether experiment in which a 12-mile-long cable was extended from the shuttle to test the idea of using tethers to generate electricity in space. As Musgrave was filming the experiment, he noticed a strange object moving across the frame. At first, he thought it was a reflection or a lens flare, but as he zoomed in on the object, he realized it was a long, thin, serpentine object with what appeared to be lights on it. Musgrave estimated that the object was about 10 to 30 feet long and said that it appeared to be moving independently of the shuttle and the tether. He described the object as a giant, snake-like creature that was moving deliberately through space. The encounter lasted for about 10 minutes, during which time Musgrave and his crewmates tried to determine what the object was. They ruled out the possibility that it was a reflection or a lens flare, and also ruled out the possibility that it was a piece of debris or space junk, since it was moving too deliberately and too slowly. They also ruled out the possibility that it was an animal or a bird, since it was moving through the vacuum of space. The incident was captured on video, and the footage has been analysed by researchers, who have suggested that the object could be an advanced craft. However, NASA officials have said that the object was probably a piece of debris or space junk, and that Musgrave and his crewmates misidentified it. Regardless of what the object actually was, Musgrave's encounter has remained one of the most intriguing and mysterious sightings ever reported by an astronaut. It is a reminder that there are still many unexplained phenomena in space, and that the universe is full of mysteries that we have yet to unravel. In 2020, Russian cosmonaut Ivan Wagner captured footage of an unidentified object from the International Space Station. The video showed a fast-moving object with a distinct shape and glowing lights passing over the Earth's atmosphere. The footage quickly gained attention from enthusiasts and skeptics alike, sparking discussions about the existence of extraterrestrial life and the possibility of advanced technologies beyond human comprehension. The object spotted by Wagner is not the first reported sighting from space. NASA astronauts have also reported seeing objects that they could not explain while on missions. The subject of mysterious aircrafts in space has long been a topic of interest and debate among the scientific community and the general public. Despite the compelling nature of the Wagner footage, skeptics argue that the object could have been a satellite, a piece of space debris, or a natural phenomenon such as a meteor. However, some experts have pointed out that the object appears to have maneuvered in a way that suggests it was not simply a random piece of space debris, also noting that it hovered motionless for several minutes without moving. The Wagner sighting adds to the growing body of evidence that suggests the possibility of extraterrestrial life and advanced technologies beyond human understanding. While the scientific community has yet to provide definitive proof of such phenomena, the fascination and intrigue surrounding the topic continue to capture the public's imagination. As space exploration and technology continue to advance, it is likely that further sightings and evidence will emerge, fueling ongoing discussions and debates about the existence of extraterrestrial life and advanced civilizations. The United States National Aeronautics and Space Administration has long been a source of interest for enthusiasts. Many have wondered whether NASA has investigated sightings or encountered unexplained aerial phenomena in their missions. NASA has always maintained that it is a scientific organization focused on space exploration and has not made any formal statement on the existence of extraterrestrial life or mysterious aircrafts. However, there have been reports of NASA astronauts and officials discussing sightings of strange aircrafts and unexplained aerial phenomena. In more recent years, NASA astronauts have reported seeing unusual lights and objects while in space. In 2019, various strange objects were allegedly detected outside the International Space Station, with one user describing them as large, glowing objects that didn't match anything that was close by. Despite these reports, 
NASA has maintained that there is no evidence of extraterrestrial life or advanced aircrafts. While NASA has not made any formal statement on whether they have investigated sightings or unexplained aerial phenomena, some former NASA employees have spoken out about their experiences. In 2009, astronaut Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who was part of the Apollo 14 mission, spoke about his belief in extraterrestrial life and the existence of a government cover-up. He claimed that NASA had been covering up evidence of advanced beings visiting Earth and said that they have been doing this for decades. As of right now, while NASA has not made any official statements on mysterious aircrafts or unexplained aerial phenomena, there have been reports of sightings and experiences by astronauts and officials. The organization's focus on scientific research and space exploration may limit its willingness to publicly discuss such topics, but the public's interest in the possibility of advanced life and aircrafts continues to be a topic of debate and fascination. One of the most fascinating questions that have intrigued scientists, astronomers, and the general public for decades is the possibility of the existence of intelligent extraterrestrial life. With billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars, many of which are sun-like, it seems statistically likely that some of them could host life. However, despite decades of searching and studying the universe, we have yet to find concrete evidence of the existence of aliens. So, why have we seen no sign of aliens? One possible answer is that the universe is too vast, and the distances between stars and planets are too great for us to make contact with aliens. The nearest star system to our own, Alpha Centauri, is more than four light years away. This means that it would take us over four years to travel there at the speed of light. Furthermore, even if we did detect signals from an alien civilization, it would still take years for us to communicate with them, assuming they could receive and send signals at a similar speed. Another possibility is that we have not been looking in the right place. Our search for extraterrestrial life has primarily focused on planets that are similar to Earth, with the assumption that life could only exist in conditions that are similar to those on our planet. However, this assumption may be too narrow, and life could exist in environments that we have not considered, such as underground oceans, methane seas, or extreme temperatures. Additionally, it is possible that we have already received signals from extraterrestrial civilizations, but we have not recognized them. In 1977, the famous WOW signal was detected by astronomers at the Ohio State University, but it has not been detected since. While there are various theories about the origin of the signal, including that it was a transmission from aliens, it remains a mystery. Another possible reason why we have not seen any signs of aliens is that they are simply not interested in communicating with us. It is possible that they have evolved beyond the need for communication or that they do not see us as a threat or a valuable enough civilization to interact with. Alternatively, it is possible that they are intentionally avoiding us to prevent interference in our development or to maintain the secrecy of their existence. As of right now, the absence of concrete evidence of the existence of aliens remains one of the greatest mysteries in science. While we have not found any definitive proof of the existence of extraterrestrial life, the possibility of its existence remains tantalizingly real. Whether we will ever make contact with aliens or not is still unknown, but the search for extraterrestrial life continues to captivate our imaginations and inspire scientists to explore the universe further. The universe is vast and has countless galaxies, each containing an enormous number of stars, planets, and other celestial objects. As a result, it is difficult to estimate the exact number of planets in the universe. However, scientists have been able to make rough estimates based on current knowledge and data. The Milky Way galaxy, which is the home of our solar system, is estimated to contain between 100 billion and 400 billion planets. Scientists have already discovered thousands of planets outside our solar system using telescopes and other detection methods. Beyond the Milky Way galaxy, there are billions of other galaxies, each containing an estimated number of stars and planets. This suggests that there are potentially trillions of planets in the observable universe. It is worth noting that while there may be an enormous number of planets in the universe, it is also important to consider the conditions required for life to exist. For example, a planet must be in the habitable zone of its star, which is the region where conditions are favorable for liquid water to exist. 
Additionally, the planet must have the right atmosphere, temperature and other conditions that are necessary for life to exist. While we may not know the exact number of planets in the universe, it is clear that there are many possibilities for discovering new planets and expanding our understanding of the cosmos. With advances in technology and exploration, it is likely that we will continue to uncover new information about the planets in the universe and their potential for harboring life. The universe is vast, with countless stars, planets and other celestial bodies. One of the most significant structures in the universe is the galaxy, which is a collection of billions of stars held together by gravity. Galaxies come in different shapes and sizes, and scientists estimate that there are billions of them in the universe. But just how many galaxies are there? In 2016, a study conducted by an international team of astronomers estimated that there are roughly two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. The observable universe is the portion of the universe that we can see from Earth, which is limited by the speed of light and the age of the universe. This estimate was based on data collected by the Hubble Space Telescope and other observatories, which have been used to survey large portions of the sky and count the number of galaxies present. While the number of galaxies in the observable universe is staggering, it is important to note that this estimate only accounts for a small fraction of the entire universe. The universe is believed to be much larger than the observable universe, and it is likely that there are many more galaxies beyond our current reach. Despite the vast number of galaxies in the universe, many of them are too far away to be observed directly. Scientists have developed various techniques to study galaxies indirectly, such as analyzing their light spectra or studying the gravitational lensing effects they produce. By studying galaxies, scientists hope to better understand the formation and evolution of the universe, as well as the processes that drive the formation and evolution of individual galaxies. As of right now, while we may never know exactly how many galaxies exist in the universe, current estimates suggest that there are at least two trillion in the observable universe alone. As technology and techniques continue to improve, it is likely that we will continue to discover new galaxies and gain a better understanding of the vast and complex universe we live in. According to officials in India, space debris with an unknown origin has been discovered in three nearby villages in the western state of Gujarat, India. Inhabitants found pieces of suspected debris dispersed around the area. Residents of the village had left their houses when they heard loud thudding sounds, which caused the ground to shake. Their inquisitiveness prompted them to contact the authorities regarding the fragments, which took the form of significant metallic spheres. Oddly enough, around the same time residents reported seeing large metal spheres flying above them, describing them as being perfectly circular and making no noise. Following this, the officials dispatched the pieces for forensic examination. According to residents, the initial fragment of debris, which was a black ball weighing approximately 5 kilograms, landed in the area at 4.45 in the afternoon. According to the Indian Express, three peculiar fragments were found in villages that were only 15 kilometers apart from each other. The local law enforcement authorities have verified the commencement of an investigation and have deployed a team of forensic analysts to conduct an inquiry. According to Ajit Rajan, who serves as a superintendent of police in Anand, there are suspicions that the metal balls found may be debris from a satellite. According to law enforcement officials, the individuals living in the village did not report any injuries, but did report strange lights in the sky at the time of the sighting, noting that helicopters and officers soon flooded the region and collected samples of the object before quickly leaving. According to Mr. Rajian, there were no injuries or casualties reported. Fortunately, the object fell in an open area in two places, and away from a house in Kambolaj. As of right now, officials said that they do not possess sufficient information to classify this particular space object, but said that eyewitnesses said that it descended from the sky and hit the ground hard. According to law enforcement officials, they intend to delay any further action until they receive a report from the forensics team. Oddly enough, there's still speculation as to what this object was, and some suggested that the strange lights seen the night before could be connected to the object that fell. As of right now, 
More investigations are needed in order to get to the bottom of what this mysterious object is. Carbon dioxide confirmed on the Moon We are always looking for gases and compounds on other planets that resemble what we see on Earth. While we have heard many whispers of water on Mars that could indicate life, one lesser heard conversation is that of carbon dioxide on the Moon. Though after decades of theorizing and questioning, it seems as though we might have an answer. Researchers as of November 2021 seem to have found lunar carbon dioxide cold traps that could have solid carbon dioxide components. Some areas of our moon are constantly shadowed, shrouded in darkness, with little impact from the sun in these areas. The temperatures can drop lower than those of Pluto. With such staggeringly low temperatures, cold traps are able to form. Cold traps are areas so cold that volatile substances can freeze and become solid. So why does it really make a difference if the CO2 is solid or not? If the carbon dioxide is solid, this means that it can be used to prolong lunar research. In the future when we send explorers up, whether they are human or robotic, this solid carbon dioxide can provide the necessary materials for fuel and materials for longer expeditions. Furthermore, increasing our understanding of how volatile substances interact on the Moon could help us with research into how water, amongst other elements and compounds, form and may appear on the Moon. Despite this new research confirming the existence of and mapping out the areas for carbon dioxide cold traps, the idea of cold traps has been included in discussions and predictions by planetary scientists for years. To begin confirming these theories and suggestions, researchers used 11 years' worth of temperature data from the Diviner Lunar Radiometer Experiment, a high-tech piece of equipment aboard NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. The 2021 research published in the AGU Journal Geophysical Research Letters shows that a number of the cold traps are focused on the lunar south pole. They span 204 square kilometers. The most concentrated area is in the Amundsen Crater, which is home to 84 square kilometers of cold traps. Here, the temperatures never seem to exceed 60 degrees Kelvin, which is about minus 352 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite the exciting and promising aspects of this discovery, it is important to remember that just because there are cold traps on the Moon does not mean that there are solid forms of carbon dioxide, just that there could potentially be. Norbert Schorkhofer, a planetary scientist at the Planetary Science Institute and the lead author of this study, said, My surprise was that the cold traps are actually definitely there. There are plenty of missions to track down aspects of research that go by unsuccessfully, with years of more studying before being able to confirm any of the theories at all. This research continues to be highly promising. While at the moment all we can confirm is the existence of cold traps, it will not be long before these discoveries have much greater, more practical applications, from rocket fuel to finding water. There is a huge void near our galaxy. One fact about the cosmic world might be surprising. Galaxies are unevenly clustered around the universe, clumping together at random. Despite the assumption of some, one galaxy does not begin when another one ends. Instead, they are spread all throughout. We are part of something dubbed the Local Group, which consists of our very own Milky Way and the nearby Andromeda Galaxy, with a cluster of tiny dwarf galaxies surrounding us. It is close to the Milky Way that the local void resides. The local void is a structure in our cosmic neighborhood, so to speak, that contains nearly no galaxies proper, dwarf or otherwise. The Milky Way borders the void directly. Our galaxy, however, is moving further away from the void at about 260 km per second. This is a result of the fact that matter attracts matter. This is also the reason as to why such voids exist. Because of the way gravity works, matter clumps together, thus leaving chunks of space completely devoid of anything at all. These voids, thus, only increase in their size as time goes on and more matter compacts together. Nothingness in space is significantly more common than galaxies or stars or planets. The Cosmic Flows 3 chart depicts over 17,000 galaxies near our Milky Way and it also depicts the Cosmic Void. The point of the cosmic flow is to showcase an accurate compendium of our observable nearby universe. 
The space voids are an incredibly interesting subject because learning more about them could help us better understand dark matter and how it works. Unfortunately, it is a Herculean task to try and study the local void as it resides right behind the central Milky Way, meaning seeing into it is virtually impossible as of right now. Scientists will have to find an alternative way to study the void other than visually searching for it. Researchers did, however, find a way to trace the dwarf galaxies nearby when it comes to monitoring the void. They found that the nearest dwarf galaxy to the void travels at a shocking 350 km per second. This speed suggests that the size of the void must be immense for the faster something travels away from the void, the weaker its gravity, thus the larger it must be. The knowledge that we live merely 150 million light years away from this enormous empty void might sound frightening for some. But fortunately, there is absolutely no risk of us getting sucked into it. It is not a black hole. It is simply an area of space that lacks matter. In a handful of centuries, we will be much further away from it. One of the fastest spinning stars is spitting out gamma rays. Phenomenal on many levels, a star which spins at a mind-shattering 707 times per second also spits out strong gamma rays it has been found. The neutron star, which is located at least 4,400 light-years away from our own planet, is a celestial entity known as a pulsar. Pulsars are very dense, very fast-spinning neutron stars formed as a giant star collapses. They have many weird and wonderful features, all powerful by nature, such as a strong magnetic field, and they shoot out beams of radiation from their two poles. Because of these, when combined, it leads to an intermittent flashing effect, meaning pulsars can only be seen from Earth at certain times. Hence, the distance 4,400 light-years is an approximation because we do not actually know for certain how far this particular neutron star is from us. Back to our neutron star. It was first observed in 2017 by the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, yet despite the name it was never thought to emit gamma rays in bursts. This said, as time went by and astronomers gathered annual and consistent data on it, they detected pulsing radio signals from the star, such as the fact that it is the second fastest spinning neutron star ever discovered bested only by a record of 716 spins per second recorded in 2006. As mentioned before, with the star being a pulsar, it has been really difficult for scientists to accurately gather data on it. Its estimated distance and location are based on data relating to its whereabouts, according to radio measurements. However, due to extreme heat differences around the pulsar itself, an unclear graphic means that optimal measurements make it seem 13,200 light-years away. Furthermore, scientists are not yet sure why gamma rays were not detected back in 2017. Guesses have been that the star's orbit could have changed between now and then, making them more sensitive to our technologies. However, there is no evidence that this is the case. Given the already subtle nature of data able to be gathered from this pulsar, it seems we may have to wait another few years to find out the whole story, or at least a little bit more as to why it is so mysterious. An unusual luminous sphere has been captured on video hovering near the sun. Groups that investigate unidentified objects have alleged that this is additional evidence indicating the existence of advanced beings. Oddly enough, those who saw the image said that this same object was seen a few years back and noted that it appeared to be draining the sun of its energy. Although NASA and scientists said this wasn't the case, and that what we were most likely looking at was something natural, that didn't stop believers pointing out strange facts surrounding the two events. Theorists have recently found footage captured by NASA's Helio viewer, which they believe depicts a peculiar spherical object drawing energy from the Earth's primary energy source. Over the years, there have been many reports of unidentified objects seen around the sun. These objects, which appear as bright or dark dots, have puzzled both amateur and professional astronomers. While some people dismiss these sightings as mere anomalies, 
Others believe that they are evidence of advanced activity. One of the most famous incidents involving these objects are the large round objects that have been seen close to the sun, with some describing them as being massive black circular objects that can occasionally be seen hovering near the sun for several hours. NASA's Solar and Heliospheric Observatory captured footage of what appeared to be a giant object passing by the sun. The object, which was estimated to be several times larger than the Earth, was seen hovering near the sun before disappearing into space. The incident sparked a debate among enthusiasts, with some claiming that the object was proof of the existence of advanced life. However, skeptics argue that these sightings can be explained by natural phenomena. Some suggest that these objects may be asteroids or comets that are passing near the sun. Others claim that they are simply artifacts caused by camera glitches or other technical issues. Despite the skepticism, there have been many other reported sightings of mysterious objects around the sun. In 2016, for example, footage captured by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory showed a strange object hovering near the sun. The object appeared to be moving in a straight line before suddenly changing direction and shooting off into space. There have also been reports of large objects seen during solar flares, which are intense bursts of radiation that occur on the surface of the sun. Some people believe that these objects are attracted to the energy released during these events. While it is difficult to confirm these reports, many researchers are continuing to study these phenomena in an effort to determine their origins. Some scientists have also suggested that these sightings may be evidence of advanced technology developed by humans. They point out that many countries, including the United States, are currently developing advanced space technologies that could explain these sightings. Regardless of their origins, the sightings of large objects around the sun have captured the public's imagination. Many people believe that these objects are evidence of advanced life, and they continue to study these phenomena in an effort to determine their true nature. As more advanced technologies become available, it is likely that we will continue to uncover new mysteries about the universe around us. Engineers solve data glitch on NASA's Voyager 1. Voyager 1 is the most distant human-made object in space. It's approximately 14.6 billion miles away from Earth. It was launched by NASA on September 5, 1977, as part of the Voyager program to gather information on the outer solar system and interstellar space outside of the Sun's heliosphere. Voyager 2 was launched 16 days after. Voyagers 1 and 2 are referred to as the twin probes. Operating for nearly half a century, the two probes have gathered valuable data for NASA over the years. Voyager 1 made amazing breakthroughs in the field of astronomy. It made flybys of Jupiter, Saturn, and Saturn's largest moon, Titan. Voyager 1 is the first probe to take detailed images of the two gas giants' moons. You might be wondering where Voyager 1 is right now. The quick answer is that it is in deep space. It made it outside of the edges of the solar system and into the interstellar medium. Due to the great distance, it traveled away from the Earth. It takes about two days to send a message to the probe and another two days to get a response back, so the real answer to the question on where exactly Voyager 1 is right now is that we will never know, at least not in real time. Many people are curious to know if Voyager 1 is still working properly. After traveling billions and billions of miles over the years and considering the technology that was used to build it back in the 70s, it would be understandable if the probe breaks down and goes out of commission. Despite its age, it's very much still working, except for a data glitch. This glitch caused the Voyager 1's antenna, which is pointing to the Earth, to send garbled data. This issue started in May of 2022. NASA engineers found the cause of the glitch to be a misrouting of data. They later found out that this is being caused by a command generated by another onboard computer that had stopped functioning years ago. The team concludes that there is an underlying issue somewhere else in the spacecraft. This leads many to believe that this problem is a threat to the long-term functionality of Voyager 1. Voyager project manager Suzanne Dodd stated that the solution is simply to send a command to Voyager 1 to send data to the correct computer. Thankfully, the glitch was solved and Voyager 1 is back to normal operation. Scientists find remains of baby planets swallowed by Jupiter. 
the largest planet in our solar system, the fifth away from the Sun and perhaps best known for its large red spot, Jupiter, the gas giant, is an interesting point of research. And whilst recently the planet's moons have been the star of the show when it comes to research around this planet, this time Jupiter itself is making headlines. Scientists believe that they may have uncovered a rather interesting aspect behind Jupiter's composition. The gas giant is more than twice as big as the other planets in our solar system combined. Though a June 2022 discovery just might be pushing us a step closer to figuring out just how this mammoth planet came to be quite so colossal. Researchers have uncovered that Jupiter has seemingly taken in the remains of baby planets that surrounded it, letting it become the huge planet we know it as today. Despite the large physical presence in our solar system, Jupiter is somewhat difficult to gain an insight on. The planet has an upper atmosphere that, whilst pretty, manages to conceal an awful lot of information. Jupiter features a stunning set of swirling clouds which have been well documented. It's what's below these clouds that we really don't know about. This new finding has come along following a clear view of what's going on beneath the atmosphere, giving us a glimpse at the chemistry working away within. Lead researcher Yamila Miguel, an astrophysicist at Leiden University, based in the Netherlands, explained how Jupiter, despite being one of the first planets to become part of our solar system, remains very unknown. In fact, we have almost no certain definitive information on the formation of the planet. The research in this new study was made possible thanks to the NASA space probe Juno. Juno was sent out on a mission specifically aiming to uncover the origins and evolutions of Jupiter. It's hoped that a clearer perspective on Jupiter could be applicable to plenty of other aspects of our solar system and beyond. It would seem that Juno is delivering on its mission to find out more on Jupiter, as the probe's gravitational data is what allowed us to take a peek past the clouds hovering above the planet. The team were able to fathom out the layout of the rocky substances down to the planet's core, where a whole host of different chemicals were uncovered. Between Jupiter's well-established status as a gaseous giant and the rocky materials seen throughout the journey to the core, some scientists have suggested that the chemical composition of Jupiter suggests it took in, or devoured, planetesimals, essentially baby planets, to push forth its own growth. Pluto has giant ice volcanoes that could hint at the possibility of life. As it turns out, Secrets have been hiding on the dwarf planet Pluto's surface all this time. According to astronomers, giant ice volcanoes have recently erupted with icy sludge. This area on Pluto is completely unique compared to what astronomers have seen in our solar system. This new discovery was made possible with NASA's New Horizons spacecraft, which captured photos of Pluto's moons and surface in 2015. These images were used to observe Pluto more closely than before and led to the discovery of two prominent peaks that were thought to be icy volcanoes. This speculation was further proved by clues of erupted ice lava found in the images. While we tend to associate volcano eruptions with hot lava, ice volcanoes or cryovolcanoes erupt with water ice mixed with other substances such as methane or ammonia. For years, astronomers have been searching for evidence of these cryovolcanoes on other solar objects like the dwarf planet Ceres and Saturn's moon Titan. As Pluto has been long suspected of having cryovolcanoes due to it resting on the frigid edge of the solar system's Kuiper belt, these photos provide more evidence for their existence on the dwarf planet. The eruptions of slush are also expected to keep their shape due to the average temperature of Pluto sitting at minus 387 degrees Fahrenheit. According to the author of the study, Kelsey Singer, the icy material was probably more like the texture of toothpaste when it first erupted out of the ice volcanoes. But due to the extreme temperatures on Pluto, the liquid water quickly formed massive domes found on the region. Due to the lack of impact craters in the area around the cryovolcanoes that are usually seen on Pluto's surface, it is suggested that the ice volcanoes were active about 100 to 200 million years ago, a relatively short time in the grand scheme of things. 
This recent activity indicates to astronomers that the volcanoes may erupt again just as volcanoes on Earth switched from dormancy to activity. Astronomers know that Pluto once had a subsurface ocean, and the discovery of these ice volcanoes points to the possibility that they may still be present. This possibility of a liquid ocean existing on Pluto increases the once 0% possibility of existing life on Pluto to a slim chance. As Singer points out, there are still a lot of challenges for any organisms trying to survive there. They would still need some source of continual nutrients, and if the volcanism is episodic and thus the heat and water availability is variable, that is sometimes tough for organisms as well. Despite the challenges, this slim chance has been a giant leap in the knowledge of what we previously believed about Pluto. The Oldest Black Hole in the Universe Many celestial bodies in the universe are old, but when scientists in 2017 realized they had found what could be one of the oldest black holes in the universe, they were understandably ecstatic. The black hole, ULAS J1342, 0928 has a name just as big as its size. Astronomers were flabbergasted to find that the black hole, located millions of light years away, had a mass that's more than 800 million times larger than that of our Sun. Even more amazingly, the gigantic black hole reached this mass when the universe was only at 5% of its current age. The gargantuan ULAS black hole first came into creation a mere 690 million years after the Big Bang, a very short time in the relative time of the universe. The discovery of such a massive celestial body may teach us more about black holes and their massive sizes. This may shine a light on how the conditions of the early universe changed to what they currently are today. The black hole is also paired with a nearby quasar, and the bright display of light also takes a new record for the furthest discovered quasar. The record used to belong to ULAS J1120-0641, which is a distant 13.04 billion light-years from us, and came into existence around 750 million years after the Big Bang. It's believed that at the centre of most, if not all, galaxies lies a supermassive black hole. These black holes are much larger than their standard-sized namesakes, and can reach anywhere from millions to billion times the mass of our Sun. Studies in the past have developed the idea that these massive space vacuums create huge displays of light as they devour local stars and other matter. These events are believed to create what we know as quasars, which are some of the brightest objects in the known universe. Because of their incredible brightness, researchers and astronomers are able to pick up and detect quasar activity from some of the farthest points in the known universe, meaning they are some of the most distant objects we know that exist. Quasars that are further away are much older in age, and the older and further a quasar is, the longer it takes for the light to travel to Earth. There may be 300 million habitable planets in our galaxy. Late in 2020, NASA claimed that recent evidence and calculations suggest that our galaxy holds at least 300 million planets that could potentially harbour life, with the closest being 20 light years away from Earth. A team of researchers used old observational data from the Kepler telescope, which scanned the Milky Way to find habitable worlds. From that data, the scientists found that about 50% of the sun-like stars throughout our galaxy system have planets with environments and sizes that might be capable of holding liquid water. Four of these planets are within 30 light-years from Earth. They calculate that as low as 7% of these stars would have habitable planets, which leads to their 300 million figure estimates. The experts say that it could even be as high as 75% chance, which would then reach up to 3 billion planets. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope operated for nine years as it searched space for planets that orbit other stars. Its mission was only supposed to last three years, but it managed to conserve fuel so well that it stretched three gallons into nine years of orbit. It confirmed about 2,662 planets in our galaxy and proved there were more planets than stars in it. 
It gathered so much data that researchers had to use a computer algorithm to try and sort through it all. The algorithm still made mistakes and identified many false positives, so teams are currently going through the observations by hand to check whether any planet was missed or incorrectly identified. The scientists narrowed their search to planets that were of similar size or at least half that of Earth. There are many factors that result in a planet being habitable, but overall it needs to be rocky. Any planets larger than Earth are usually gaseous. They also looked for stars that resembled our Sun in age and temperature and data from ESA's Gaia telescope to review the energy output of these individual stars. This data can inform them whether the star emits too much radiation or not enough energy to sustain life. They can then observe whether water is able to survive in liquid form on these planets. With Gaia's details on the stars within the galaxy cross-referencing Kepler's data, researchers plan to determine which stars and planets have an atmosphere that supports habitability. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.